We're live! Painkiller already, episode 290. Sexier people? Oh, Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Look at Murka. Murka is, is, I don't know, 13, 16% sexier right there. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd so, go 18. 18, you think? Uh, you're pushing it now. <laughs> we just said that this episode of Painkiller Already is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your online professional website portfolio or online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and enter offer code PKA at checkout. Plans start at as little as $8 a month and include a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Dude, so check them out. I was looking at Squarespace's DDoS protection. It's built into their system, which is fucking awesome. Like I, I mean, we used to run a Huppet Gaming, and every time I promoted it, like they just knock off Huppet for you know, the, like the key hours, like the first twelve hours that I put a video up telling people about it, they knock it offline, and it sucked. I, I wish that back then the the default was for people like Squarespace to have DDoS protection. But if your site does somehow get popular and people take an interest in it then it will likely stay up because you're on a hardcore hosting platform like Squarespace. So sweet. Check them out. What's the coupon code? It's uh, it's, it's squarespace.com slash PKA. Yeah. Link, yeah. link on your screen and uh, you'll be good to go. And we have, I know we always keep joking about it and we've used it, a, we've kind of beaten it into the ground, but we really should uh, partner with them and like make, even if it's just a silly joke website, I think that would be cool. I bet they would be up for like providing it for free. Let's just make a fuck Kyle website where you just go there and it just says your your computer says fuck Kyle fuck Kyle fuck like something really simple and basic and cheap just let's do something fun with it that we can talk yeah. about or like you photoshopped into horrific porn scenes like just yeah fun. there's that there's a YouTube video called like what would FPS Russia look like in a dress and it's just like a whole like montage of my face put into onto women's bodies and dresses you know any, anything humiliating like that I enjoy that sort of thing dude I reserved I've got uh, sleepingwithwoody.com because Sleeping With Jeff was that thing they did in the Super Bowl ad and everything. Yeah. I just want to upload an album of me snoring and see who buys it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, I, have, I, have, I have seen that performance live, and I give it two thumbs down. I am not, <laughs> I, you cannot get me involved in that program uh, for any amount of money. We were discussing this earlier. Uh, you know, with the potential sleeping arrangements at Paintball, and we were trying to find a way to, like, protect others from Chiz and Woody snoring. It's like, it's like, I think we're going to get Joe to come along, and it's like, well, maybe me and Joe could bunk together, and Woody and Chiz could both get separate rooms way down the hallway <laughs> at the hotel across the street. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping in my truck. Yeah, and you I, just I, can't I, complain about that sort of thing, because what are you going to do? Hey, man, quit doing that thing that you can't help doing when you're unconscious. And like... <laughs> I, it's not gonna work. So I, I, I just, wonder, have I always been snoring this badly? Like Jackie complained, but Joe's never fussed. I don't know how many nights I've shared with Joe, but like he's never complained. Maybe he sleeps first and deep. I don't know. But uh, now I'm Joe's all... dealt with bigger problems. He's not <laughs> that worried. <laughs> that could be it. But um, but yeah, I I, it, I now I'm suddenly self conscious about it because what have we do these movie nights? And uh, sometimes I I go in and out of sleep while we watch the movies. <laughs> And uh, it's me, Chiz, and Woody in this in this Skype call, li watching whatever movie. I, what was the we watched uh, that Denzel Washington movie, um, The Equalizer? The Equalizer? yeah, we watched that. that right. It was okay. It reminded me a little bit of um, that. Uh, what's the movie that Keanu just made? Uh, John Wick. It reminded me like uh, a like a poor man's John Wick, in mm -hmm. my opinion. But it, it was on the same level of it was gun it was gun fu. You know, it, lots of shooting people in crazy weird ways and. Uh, t killing a guy with a shot glass by shoving it into his eye socket, stuff like that. Did you like John Wick? I, I enjoyed I thought that it. Was actually pretty good. A lot. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be like a revival of Keanu's career. I, I saw an interview with him uh, not too long ago. It was it was right after his his that kung fu movie he he made last bombed, and it was hundreds of it was like a hundred million dollar movie, maybe one fifty. And he was talking about all the um, all the uh, roles that he he has went out for, but he just didn't get. And he was like. And, you know, normally when they ask him, well, how does that make you feel? He's like, well, you know, the best actor got it. And I just, I could have never done as good a job as so-and-so. But he was just like, yeah, it feels like, sh I, I feel shitty, you know, when I was <laughs> those. Because I want them. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to be an X-Man. I wanted to be. He wanted the Iron Man, right? Was that Iron Man? Yeah, he wanted all of these different roles, yeah. And, uh, and he didn't get any of them, you know. I'm sure he wanted to be an Avenger. I bet he tried out to be Hawkeye or something like that. You mm -hmm. know, he just doesn't get them. So with John Wick, I, I feel like maybe... Maybe the studios take him a bit more seriously now. I know they're making a John Wick too. They've already like punched the ticket on that. But I think that's a 
I don't, like don't make a John Wick two. They are. Just let it, let it live. They're going to curb stomp that fucking dog this time. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I want to see. She's going to go get ne- Liam Neeson to be his vet, and they're going to they're going to tag <laughs> team the the dog stompers. I hated Hawkeye in Avengers one. Not hated is strong, but oh. it's like he just there's nothing there. But then I wonder, <laughs> was there a possibility to have anything there? Right, the character was like whatever mind fuck. No, you were right with hated. Show. That's a shit tier character. Yeah, but, he doesn't have any ability really he could shoot an arrow really good like <laughs> <laughs> well black widow yeah. doesn't as far as i know have any great thing other than being seductive and uh you know obviously a she, great fighter but she's see a, and that's good enough she's a female assassin though she's like a world famous female assassin it, it, i mean i don't know right. if it's well I, I just put her on the same tier as like hawkeye batman black she's widow she's an hero just not a superhero yeah, so, but the thing about Hawkeye's spot, and God, these comic book guys who really know what they're talking about will hang me up, but in that movie, for like, whatever, 80% of the movie, he was under a mind control, and he didn't really have the ability to be a hero until that final climactic scene. Yeah. See, usually they have a counterbalance between, like, if a character is super ridiculously strong, he can't be super ridiculously smart, like the Hulk. Like, he is, but when he's the Hulk, he's not super ridiculously smart. Mm-hmm. Hawkeye had no such counterbalance. He's worthless in every sphere you play. <laughs> Terrible. He's just like Bullseye from Daredevil, where it's like, oh, that guy can throw a card real good. Wouldn't want to bet against him in a pub. Like, that's it. That's fucking it. <laughs> but he, he had, like, super arrows and stuff, right? Like, he'd, he, he'd, he'd hit the moving targets in the weak spot on the move. and Dude. Kyle could kill, bull, could kill either of them, Bullseye or Hawkeye. You don't have to hit the like, but, but, but you don't have to hit his fucking button. You just gotta hit his chest. I mean, <laughs> I mean, who cares if you can hit his button every time? That's a cool show off thing. But why doesn't somebody just shoot some of these lesser superheroes? I feel like they just need a couple of guys that know how. To, and I mean, you could go get some country boys or something. I got three or four friends I, right now that can go take Hawkeye down. Like they would love to. I, think I, you're I like right. to. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You just you, the Punisher. Now the Punisher is a badass uh, superhero. I feel like the Punisher doesn't pretend like he's got some sort of advanced, you know, uh, calisthenics or anything. He's not doing backflips. He's just a regular guy, Frank Castle, who's had enough. His family's been taken away from him, and he's going to punish people for the wrongs they've done. And he's got guns and explosives and cars, and it's realistic. But wasn't the Punisher, like, already dead and came back, though? I mean, they kill, they kill them all off once. You can't... The comic Semantics. book canons, can't, Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he's, he's, he's mortal. He's, he's, he's just a regular guy. Uh-huh. Oh, we See, didn't introduce the, the our guy's guests. character from the Hurt Locker could kill Hi. his character from the superhero movie. I'm, I'm Wicked Shrapnel. Hey, Wicked Shrapnel, what do you do? Um, I play video games and I make videos and post them on YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. We <laughs> and got you've got a wonderful show. Uh, puppet show backdrop there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that really is the same backdrop that Shoe Nice has. That's excellent. <laughs> It's just the other <laughs> side. There's like the green screen thing. I didn't want to put the green up, so the other side of it's blue. Yeah. Have you ever a lot seen of a non? Have you? I, what should I call you? I'm sorry, I don't know your first name. Just call me Wicked. Wicked. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, dragons. So, Dragon Slayer. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> it just you occurred ever to me. I played you in like a six v six, four v four. What did we play? Yeah, that was back in the day. Do you was remember that? that? MW three. If I recall correctly, didn't <clears throat> Wings of Redemption call you guys out and say you sucked at COD or something? How, uh, what? No, he called out Jay Nasty, and then Jay Nasty picked me and my clan to be his teammates. And then after that, it was like PwnStars.com, Trademark. Uh, <laughs> Those guys are really good. Yeah, they yeah. Are. And so that, that was like going to be the team versus whatever six that he picked, and then... He backed out, and then he backed out because it was supposed to be on PKA, I think, because we're going to stream it. And then he backed out, and so you volunteered. And then yeah, I was trying to take the heat off him, like yeah. the whole world was, because he called you out, not you, but he <laughs> called out Jay Nasty, and yeah. then he backed down, and he even backed down and said, "Look, I'm not as good." You know, like, sorry, I'm going to lose this. I don't see any way I can come out of this looking good. I'd rather just not lose. And uh, at the time, he really, really cared about how good he was at video games. Like, it was a big part of his sense of at self-worth. The, at the time? I yeah. bet he would um, fight you right now if you, if you insulted his cod ability. <laughs> <laughs> He'd go hand-to-hand like it was Nom. 
So anyway, uh, but at the time, I think he more closely thought his like career and his gaming skills were linked together. Whereas okay. now, I think he sees himself as more a personality. But um, so he went like bonkers on this thing, and 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 everyone was giving him a hard time. So I jumped in, and uh, I got ridiculously good teammates. Every one of them was like a top <laughs> MLG pro. <laughs> it was it was the optic gaming. It was the whole, it was it was the whole team. Yeah, yeah, optic gaming plus a few more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah uh, well, I, I hated that i did so poorly now granted i'm not gonna lead this lobby right these guys were super pros but i was literally streaming three times like back in the day on i forget if it was youtube or twitch but if you wanted to have multiple resolutions you had to stream in 720 and 480 oh, yeah. Yeah. so i streamed to youtube are you whistling no <laughs> i it's, stop was like I'll do that in a second. I, I had to stream. I think I streamed to Twitch twice and YouTube once, or maybe it was the other way. YouTube twice and Twitch once, and uh, and I just had like the world's worst connection. That's, that sounds so awful. Like the excuses I'm making, but it is true. If you stream yourself three times while you play COD, it'll you'll have a, a one bar, which is what I had. But we were able to go to Game Five against you and Optic, so I was, yeah, I was, I was happy with that. But was it five or? Well, I, it, I was, it was, it was supposed three. to be. It was, but then we played domination, and they're like, "Oh, well, let's play the other side." And then we won both sides of the domination, and they had won the first two, like CTF and okay, right, right, something else. So it was really two to two, kind of, and then then kind of made it. The I best heard thing. the story. So you guys were um, pr like scrimming, practicing, and you ran up against a clan who had an unbeatable strategy yeah. for that map. What was it? Hard hat or something? What was that map called? I, th uh, I think that's what it was called. It was the construction site in Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they just, I think they used um, well, tactical well, insertions in C4. Yeah. And it was just so hard to get map control back. <laughs> it, it was, that strategy is definitely OP. People are like, oh my God, that's so cheap. But it was like, it was pub rules. That was the whole idea. Was yeah. like, pub that rules was... 6v6. This is why they don't have pub rules in MLG. Or that's what you get. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the MLG guys would have won by MLG rules. But that was like also part right. of the thing. You know, pub guys won by pub rules. MLG guys won by MLG rules. And then uh, I forget how it ended. I know that we won more games, but I don't remember which rule sets we played under or whatever. But yeah, anyway, I stepped in for wings so that... No one would fuss at him anymore. Noble Woody stepping in with a one bar as Wings slinks away in disgrace. <laughs> a, what else? So, uh, oh, so it's been a few weeks since I've talked to you guys. What's the the Wings update? What's going on? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, 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 didn't internet, I didn't have internet for a week, so I, I got disconnected from everything. All I had what? was news, so that kind of... How can you me. live without internet for a week? That's impossible. I feel like not much is... <laughs> I think he's live streaming a lot. He stopped dieting and exercising, focusing instead on income. And uh, I think he's... Skating having... mass right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, we must start with a giant block of marble. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's, Gating Mass isn't always sunny in Philadelphia reference. That's what I was laughing at. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. So he stopped it with the diet and exercise. Like that just wasn't his thing. And um, now he's working. He's live streaming and he's uploading videos more often than before. And it's my understanding that that is going better for him. That this, there's, um, I haven't seen Wings' live stream. So I, I can't call it like e begging. But the e-begging model on Twitch is turning out to be hugely profitable. Mid-level streamers are pulling $1,000 days, you know, and they're averaging like three and $500 days. What is e-begging? Pretty much you, what you do is you live stream. And um, while you live stream, you just like over celebrate every dollar people give you, right? So <laughs> like, you, like someone will donate a dollar to you. And you're like, oh, we can strap. Or let's pretend you did it to me. Um, Thank you so much for your dollar. I appreciate it. And they play like celebration videos and they read whatever <laughs> message you want them to read. Oh, it says right here, fuck Kyle. Fuck Kyle. Woohoo. Thank you for your dollar. <laughs> this is great. And it's, it's hardly even gameplay oriented anymore. It's more like a yeah. TV show that you can get on for a buck. <laughs> it's shameless pandering to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> and um, I, I, I can't knock it because I don't see any victims in this thing. The people who donate their dollar or their $3, those are, those are real frequent donation amounts, $1 or $3. 
I don't think they feel ripped off. I think they got exactly what they wanted. They got their mention. They got their thank you. They're enjoying the show. Ooh. You know, like, I really love this guy. So I'm happy to give him $3 and and um, and support him and keep him on the air. And but don't the, you feel soulless after about four hours of, of doing that? That's the thing. And I feel like, dude, all of us, you know, who are doing any kind of entertainment thing are dancing monkeys in one way or another, right? <laughs> and do, do we get to say that my version of dancing monkey is somehow more honorable than yes, their you version dance of your yes. own goddamn dance? We By dance way, the polka you, over here. Gamma that's is it. Awesome. Check you out can. my video on how effective it is. Coupon code Woody. Uh, Gamma Labs is incredible, but. <laughs> I, Keep on code wicked. <laughs> I, I um <laughs> I, I I wouldn't stoop to e begging Gamma Labs, by the way. Awesome stuff. You'll like it. Keep me awake and alert and peppy. You really did go get some Gamma Labs. I was filling up my double coffee and and he was like, I'm gonna get some Gamma Labs yeah. to live. Because it keeps me alert, and I'm sleepy, <laughs> and uh, and I, I become the energetic version of me. It, it's it's like you know the other energy drinks, but times two. So uh, it's good as snorting a line of Adderall, am I right? <laughs> it's a damn straight oh, yeah. it is. Gamma Labs like snorting Adderall. Coupon code. <laughs> <everybody. laughs> so, <laughs> so, Kyle, you dick. They should say that. They should have a guy. On the, they should. They should get Sam on the on the on the Gamma Labs box, just wide eyed and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Just jittering as he does his homework. Just... <laughs> so, uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So there's no victims in it, so I don't see any like harm in it. I also used to say this: people used to sell their um, spots on their friends list, right? I never did it. I uh, never did it. Whatever, don't care. But. I always felt like the people that bought the spots weren't being robbed. They got what they paid for. The people that sold the spots were doing fine. It was totally, it was totally worth it. The, pe the people that would pay, I don't think I was selling it for 20 or 30 bucks or something. And it was, it was twofold. And I'm sure you were going to get to this, but I'm going to steal it. You know, partly it, it filled your friends list up so you couldn't get any more messages. But also you usually, the people who would pay were usually decent players. Like, and I would get the, I would have maybe three or four of my guys and I'd, bring in one or two of these guys at a time, and I'd, I'd, I'd play with those people a lot. I met yeah. some good players like that. Like, there were guys who paid to be on my friends list, and I, and, and I wanted to be like, I wanted to, like, refund, the, refund their money at the end of it. Like, <laughs> now you're a real friend. <laughs> like, here's your 20 bucks back. But, you know, of course, but you didn't did. do that, of course. No. <laughs> but there were people who made hate videos about selling friendless spots. And by the way, yeah, people like, made hate oh videos God, about me. Whore. People made hate videos about me for selling friendless spots, and I didn't even do it. But that's that's YouTube. But anyway, um, I, I, and I always thought of it as like, well, I mean, the, what's bad is when you have unhappy customers, right? When they're getting and they're not getting what they expected to get, when they feel ripped off, that's the trouble. And with all this Twitch stuff, like, I don't know that they have unhappy customers. I think they're just whatever. Yeah, I stream on Twitch, and there's a notification that pops up and someone donates. And I say, oh, thanks for the dollar, but it's not. I, I guess I haven't seen the streams where it's just all about the donations. There'll be donation so. wars. That's a popular thing. So two streamers uh -huh. will go together. And then, like, you know, so you and I are streaming. Uh-oh, Wicked Shrapnel, he's beating me by $3. Someone keep this close. We're neck and neck. Oh, I just got ahead of Wicked. And it, yeah. it's really about the donation war more than the, the stream. Like, well, I, I that's this... kind of douchey. Yeah, I, the, the gameplay, by the way, in this particular one I'm talking about, they're just driving around in a limo. Like, one of them's the driver, one of them's a passenger, and they're just doing donation wars in Grand Theft Auto. Uh -huh. Ah, so the easiest thing to pretend to be providing content while pandering and seeking money. But I hear you, and, and you you know you look down on it, but it's like yeah, if everyone's having fun, you know the streamers are making money, the people watching are this is apparently what they want because they're giving money for it. You know, no one's getting robbed. Knock yourself out, I guess. It's yeah. true, yeah, definitely true. I just it, think it's it's kind of silly, and I kind of no, see no, the whole. No, one, nobody is being forced to do anything that they don't want to do. So yeah, it, live, it, live and let live. Party is like, ah, oh, look at them dancing monkeys begging for dollars, and then, but well, dude, how is that so different than everyone else in showbiz? Even Jennifer Lawrence making her twenty million is doing it for yeah but that's kind of like a false equivalency it's like well 50 shades of gray and game of thrones are books they're just writers what's I really have... different like there is a significant difference in quality and story structure and character development and, you know the Can finally I... coming to fruition a great storyline so but i think there would be people out there though that are more of the 50 shades of gray audience that aren't into game of thrones though so it's all depends on the consumer I... <laughs> now, great porn in both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kyle, did you listen to much uh, Game of Thrones today? 
You know, I bet you've caught up on me. No. I've been, uh, I haven't been listening. I thought about it today. I literally thought to myself, what he's fucking catching up on me. But I, I, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not... really taking getting physically fit for the paintball thing very seriously. So that's taken up a bit of my time. Well, I'm taking listening to audiobooks very seriously. <laughs> and uh, how, how many we'll books see which there? one pays off more. <laughs> um... <laughs> there are five books, Wicked. Five books. Five current, two yet to release. Probably not going to happen because he's morbidly obese and old. So, Kyle, you're 17 hours into book two. I will get you an exact number here. <laughs> and how do the, how do the audio books compare to the show? Um, it, imagine the show like the I don't know the naked structure of a building, just the studs for the walls, and when you when you look, when you get the books absorbed, it's like you know you you put the side the bricks on the outside, the insulation. It's it's everything else. It really fills in the picture. A lot, a lot more detail. It's Lots more like detail. Always, every book is better than its movie. Well, mostly, and and this is true too. Having said that, sometimes it goes on too long, you know. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to what. <laughs> Trust me here. <laughs> it does. It never goes on long enough. I love it. That like there will be fights that were displayed in, in the uh, in the television show to be like a quick fight where maybe there mm -hmm. were four people involved total. But in the book, it was a battle. There was like fifteen guys that died. You know, someone's ear got cut off and worn. You know, there's there's lots of crazy characters in there like uh, Tyrion's wild men. Those people are bad fucking ass. Like Timmet, son of Timmet, does not fuck around. On the Almost. other hand, I'll do this. When I got when I started listening to the audiobook, I was like, I can't wait for the porn part of this. This is gonna be badass, right? You know, because like, like a ten second sword fight in the show is like a five minute sword fight in the book, and they're just really doing it. My mind's eye is just loving it. And I was like, I can't wait for Tyrion to fuck some whore, and then. <laughs> <laughs> And then he does, and it's like, and then they bed together. <laughs> Scene. It's a, like, what the fuck this? No, where's the Daenerys, like, you know, like, the, the Daenerys in particular, like, her character evolved from this virgin to this, like, sexual beast, right? You know, they, they she, she was, she was like a 13-year-old virgin with Carl Drago. I'm sure I fucked his name up. And, um... And then she goes on in, in, like, she takes sex lessons and becomes this, like, super, you know, sex, sexual. She aims to be a girl. Yeah. A yeah. They literally have, like, a, a coach <laughs> teacher. So I'm waiting for this to, uh, like, to, you know, sort of unfold in the book. But no, no. George R.R. R. Martin or whatever the hell his name is. is it, what is his name? Did I get George it? George R.R. Martin. You got it. You got okay. it. Proud of you. Um, he does not do love scenes, really. He just mentions that, you know, there's a little bit in there. Like he'll mention like taking his cock in her mouth. And, <laughs> and, I don't and, even remember that. And her much. lips down below. <laughs> That's true. It's it's never sucking dick or like modern phrasing. It's and taking his phallus into her mouth. <laughs> like just. <laughs> but Woody, you have to admit, it was the feast scenes that you were like, oh my god, this can end now, right? Yeah. When he's, de oh, for when he's sure. describing the food. <laughs> I don't mind. I want to know about that pheasant I, because I like to. Oh, that pheasant wasn't as good. Like, like some people are eating better pheasants than other people. Like, I, I like hearing that their food's a little, you know, I, I like it. I don't care. I am 23 hours and 20 minutes in the book, too. You, how many, how many hours for each book? 30. Oh, roughly 30 hours a book. And, um, and Kyle is 23 minus 5. He's 18, 37. He's 18 hours ahead of me. So he was 30 hours ahead at one I point. I took a week off. I was, I was gone. Yeah. Kyle, you got to forge ahead. Book three is the best by far. I'm, I'm excited. Far. I'm excited hmm. about it. I really am. I want to know what's what's going on with a couple of the characters. Uh, the books are great. Really digging them. I'm well, check them out. An audio book form is definitely the best way to digest a book. It depends <laughs> how much time you have. So I've been driving a lot. You might not know. I bought a new house. So I'm driving 30 or 40 minutes there each way every day. And I tend to go out for lunch, and now I'm like scavenging for cheap materials for the shop, and I just have a lot of time in the car, so I'm consuming audiobooks. So you haven't moved into it yet? Just... No, no. We fired another contractor. <laughs> we uh, Jamal, Jamal had to go. Jamal's done. <laughs> no more Jamal. Jamal's too. Uh, was it like past the deadline already? Oh, the deadline was January 31st. Oh, Two wow. weeks, they said they'd take. Two weeks. We are um, about six We're in weeks. month 
We're in month two. <laughs> About to go into month three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it, I, I don't even, and then they, they say things that, that get me twisted up, like, you know, all right, we're going to get you moved into this house, and then after you move in, we'll do, like, the kitchen, the backsplashes, and the, you know, we were having, like, uh, built-ins in the master closet and stuff, and I'm like, dude, I, I don't want to move in with you. A big, big part of me moving in is you moving out. That's like part of right. the deal. You know, I, I don't want to like every morning we'll wake up and let the contractors in at 8 a.m. and walk through my bedroom as they head to my closet and get to work on a daily. No, like it, get out, get out. That's part of the, the deal. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's good. What's the ETA now? Yeah. When are you we don't like to talk home? about it. There isn't even <laughs> one. I, I'll tell you, if I were to ask them, they would say that probably a week and a half from now, they'll start painting. The painters will come in in an army of like 10 or 12 people, blast it out. And then there's just odds and ends like backsplash and master closet. Master closet by itself could be a month and a half long project. Like that's a, if, if they do it as long and drawn out and, you know, six times to repair mistakes like they've done so many other things then that's what you can expect. I'm surprised none of them hurt themselves while they were there. They were so bumbling. It was like you had the three stooges put your drywall in. <laughs> I, I, I kept waiting to hear, like, yeah, Larry cut his thumb off today, and, and Mike lost an eye. <laughs> like, it didn't even make... They were so incompetent at getting their jobs done. I don't know how they even work on a job site safely. The drywall wow. guy in particular wasn't so bad, but there were other people. Like, the guys that put doors in, that was Jamal. He fucked everything up. And at first, it, like, so Jamal's assistants are like 17 years old. They're kids. They're children. Always a good sign. Yeah. But what's worse than that is Jamal wasn't even on site the first couple days. He's working on somebody else's house while these 17-year-olds are just guessing at how to do shit. And, um... Like, they're cutting the doors to size incorrectly. There are wavy lines across the top. Like, real wavy lines. Like, like I'm like, do they fucking bite these doors? Like, it's awful. And, um... It just Jamal himself, though, turns out to suck as well. Like they were putting in a baseboard. You know the thing that's right above the floor and like it's like molding and touches the bottom of the floor. Um, we have I don't know what our baseboards are. I'm gonna call it like eight inches tall. So they had to take some off as they like fix the floors and added new hardwood and stuff. Everyone checks the, their baseboards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, but they're kind of tall. They're nice. Fans, and, and baseboard they were... having motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I got baseboard envy now. I are only like three inches. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is this. When they replaced it, they put like five inch tall baseboards on there. So Bastards. one side of the room is eight inches. The other side's five inches. They're like wow. coming up next to each other at a corner and one's <laughs> high and one's low. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, you know, and I've complained about so many things, like every door that, like, you know, you have two doors. I want to call it a French door, but it's really not that nice. You know, it, it's for a closet. Yeah, a lot like what's behind you. Now the doors are touching each other. Like as during the closing process, and they're not supposed to. If they do, then the paint wears off them, and they look used in like three days, you know, because they're rubbing on each other. It's a minor enough thing that I'm like not sure if I'm supposed to complain about that. But yes, I think you're right, you know. So I did, Everything but it gets to be, be done right before they're done, or else it'll never be done right. You know? But or you'll have to pay someone else to do it right. If you complain about stuff at that level, and I have been then you're literally complaining about every single thing they touch. They don't get anything that's perfect. Well, and, uh, that's when you did the right thing and got a new person that could do it right. Yeah. So, so like, our, <laughs> we fired some electricians, right? She was putting in, um, like, recessed lights in the ceiling, and they weren't lined up. You know, and she's like, I wish there was some way to like draw a long straight line, like a chalk line. You don't have a chalk line. You don't know about chalk lines. What the fuck, woman? You install re recessed lights and ceilings for a living, and you don't know about chalk lines. What the motherfucker? So, so I figured it was another deal where she was just an assistant, and she needed the master on site. These are not slavery terms. These are like the journeyman terms. Yeah. That, and, and, and she was just the assistant and she neither ma the master comes on site he's like digging trench lines two and a half inches deep motherfucker like it shouldn't be less than a foot deep and and he's doing awful and we fired like first we fired her and then the other you people didn't, you didn't hire these people off craigslist did you no i hired the general contractor <laughs> off a recommendation from a friend and then he hired these subcontractors and these subcontractors are awful 
awful, awful, awful. And when we fired the electricians, I was like, I felt bad for him. I wasn't sure if we should be like giving him another try or, or whatever. By the time we finished the fire, the carpenter, the finished carpenter, I'm like, you know, dude, how can this guy die in a fiery car crash? I've got to get him away. Don't get him back. He's like, Woody, I just wanted to finish the baseboards and then we'll get him gone. And then he, then he did the baseboards wrong and, and that was the last straw. This sounds like you just walked through some aisles at Home Depot and asked for volunteers. Dude. Like, how is it possible for people to be this inept? It's very yeah. frustrating. And, and, you know, like, one, the GC shouldn't have offered the job to these people. Two, these people shouldn't have taken the jobs. Like, it, if you were to hypothetically offer a job to me, and like I'm good at installing backsplashes, but it has all these other elements. I'd be like, dude, you know, I'm not your guy. Yeah, you know, I've never done a baseboard before. I times thought it was okay. Tough. They're mismatched. People are just trying to adapt. <laughs> the two times like, are okay, I'll wing it. How hard could it be? <laughs> that's, that's they got eight. a hammer and nail in their hand. I was an accountant eight months ago. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, they're. I don't know. I, I think it'll be done right in the end. I. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to overpay. That's a thing. And, um, you know, and I, I, uh, it, I won't move. I, I won't pay until it's done right. That's the scoop. You know, that's the power that I have. I can just sit here and withhold the check until all the items on the tick list are good. Right. And, and that's where that stands. Yeah, you have to sign off on What a it. disaster. That, that sounds like some people that I've hired from Craigslist, though, to do, like, odd jobs around the house, like uh -huh. at, at an old house that, like, some of the concrete and chipped off the porch and it just needed reformed to, to make a corner right and the dude just comes out with like some spackle and stuff just free handing trying to make a, <laughs> a corner with free and it was just this odd blob that he formed <laughs> onto the corner and i'm like that is not square i want like a 90 degree angle and and i'm like can we take a picture of it he was going to take a picture i let him borrow my camera he drops my camera and breaks my 500 hundred dollar camera <laughs> <laughs> why well, he's taking a picture of his shitty $100 work. All the <laughs> like, subcontractors uh, have heard me say this. I, I, I'm, you know, Jamal, if I wanted it done shitty, I'd have done it myself. Exactly. <laughs> you know, the reason you're on site, the, the whole reason you hire someone is so that it's done They're quickly and it's done right. right. You know, yeah. like someone on, on Reddit was asking me, Woody, why don't you just do this yourself? Because I'm kind of handy. I'm more handy than you might guess. And, uh, and it's like, yeah, but I, I'd be forever. I'm a one man guy. And a lot of this stuff I hadn't done before. And it would have, you know, you hire a pro, so they come in with an army, blast this stuff out because they do it every day. But could that's you not build a whole experience. house on could your own? I? No, no, no. There's a lot of stuff that I I haven't done before. I think I see. I think I could do the framing. I think I could do the electric. Probably the roofing, although I haven't done it before. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I suck at plumbing. I, there would be issues in that. I'm sure of it. And. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I could finished build carpentry. a really shitty house all by myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Finished carpentry. It would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of things in finished carpentry that I just don't have in my head. Like, you know, for example, like when you do crown molding and you hit a doorway so it has to be terminated, like how exactly does that get terminated? Do you just drill a 45 to go into it? And, you know, when do you just drill two 45 to touch and when do you cope one? You know, you take the coping saw and you cut it to match the other, which is the butt joint. I couldn't do any of that stuff. Yeah. No, I, I I have gotten really frustrated with crown molding before and and cutting those. I, it's some for some reason I kept getting the angles backwards, and then I would flip everything, and they would still be up. Then they'd just be upside down, and I'd cut the wrong side of the board. I, I gave up. I it, it was it was really making me angry. It's tricky. I lose huh? my shit over IKEA coffee tables. I <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> uh, so well, one piece of good news is I have an internet connection there now. Time Warner did their thing. So um, I literally have the, dual. You have the 300 now? No. I have 50 by 5, but I have two of them. We had one run to my uh, guest house and one run to my main house. And then I you know, had underground cables connecting the two of them and such. So, so I have a decent internet connection. It will soon be upgraded to dual 100 by 10. And cool. that's pretty good. Yeah. Time Warner here just went to 320, so that's nice. Where's here? Austin, Texas. Oh, is they must be threatened by Google Fiber. Indeed. And AT&T Uverse has like a gig of fiber here as well now, too. Do they but have it, or are they just talking about it? Uh, some, I think some people have it. I know my friend with uh, has Uverse... It's I forget what they call it, Giga Power. I think is what they're calling mm, it. Right, right. It's like three hundred up and down, but it's supposed to go to a gig up and down. 
<laughs> it's so, not in my house though. Time Warner's all I got. <laughs> so um, Google Fiber is coming to my new house, not my current one, but to my new one. And that'll be interesting to see. Like, I feel like instantly Time Warner will respond by going to 300 if they can. And it'll be good. It'll be did, good. Did that factor into your decision of uh, where to move? Yeah. Yeah. But only a little. Because um, at the time we were buying the houses, they were just on the selection list. Like, they weren't announced. But I was really happy that the gamble kind of paid off and Google Fiber is coming to the new house someday. Awesome. Yeah, and I live like right outside of Austin. I just say I, I live in Austin. Cause I live in Round Rock, but okay. where the fuck's where the fuck's Round Rock? And most people don't know where that is. <laughs> but but so it's not coming here, at least not anytime soon. Did the FCC did a big thing today? Um, two things. One, net neutrality became like an official thing. So yeah. now, like Netflix, you know how they previously had to pay like Comcast and Verizon money to get decent internet service. Well, I think they were wanting to. They couldn't, but they were wanting to, right? The, the cable companies were wanting to charge them more. No, they did. Twice. They paid. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I follow this closely. Yeah, so they, I know they paid Verizon. I know they paid Comcast. And I don't know if, who else they've actually paid. But they were kind of... It's basically... What it is for people listening... Picture these major backbones as a spider web, right? So like Cogent and Verizon and Time Warner and Comcast, they have a like a spider web across the United States of networks. And then there are points where these spider webs connect to each other. And those are the weak spots. So I, I'm pretty sure that um, Netflix goes over Cogent, which is a tier one like major league ISP. And at the spots where they connect to Verizon or Comcast, we're very weak. Now it's cheap to upgrade them, really cheap. Like in the court, like... I think it's less than 10 grand, you know, to add a new port to this stuff and put it together. But they were not wanting to do it. They wanted to get millions or tens of millions out of Netflix for them to do a $10,000 upgrade. And, um, and they got it out of them several times. And now you can no longer prioritize stuff. So you can't just like hold back Netflix. You know, you, they can't just hold back, you know, one type of traffic. And uh, it's a really good thing. It's, a, it's one of, in my head, like, I guess I'm sensitive to internet stuff, but it's one of the most important things that the Obama administration has done in the two terms. And on top of that, they did another thing. They made it so that the laws preventing new ISPs from going into certain towns, like these anti-competitive laws, they're gone. So companies like Time Warner and Comcast had pretty much paid off politicians and made it illegal for other ISPs to come to town. And those all got superseded by federal laws today. Nice. So it allows some more competition to come in. Exactly. Exactly. Competition's always a good thing. For us it is, not for them. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, is, today a major thing happened. Uh, the, the FCC made these rulings, and they were, they were strong, and, uh, and they were important. So Another very special announcement was made recently. Apparently, Emma Watson is going to appear topless in a film this summer. Ooh, even more critical than the yes, FCC. Yes, much role. more important than all that FCC <laughs> shit. You know, I was thinking about her topless career recently. It was just like yesterday or today. It's like, dude, there is a payday to be made here. She's kind of like a top boxer, right? In that, like, you are in your prime, baby. How old is Emma Watson? Like, 26, 27? 21, maybe? No. <laughs> no. Way. Is she really that young? Well, There's crazy. no way. Emma I bet she's 24. <laughs> She is 24. Hmm. Okay. But there is a backlog of people who want to see those hoo-hahs. And I, I, it's just like, it is time, baby. You, she's, she was doing the like Mayweather Pacquiao thing, waiting till she was past her prime to show the jugs. And and baby, cash in now. She's, she'll get 20 million, 30 million for a role where she shows up topless. Get some. It, it doesn't look like she's got jugs, though, to me. Uh... <laughs> she doesn't really need the money, though. She's sitting on all that wizard cash. Like, she doesn't need shit. It's definitely more of the athletic body type. I, more of a fit body type. I, I, She's I, worth sixty million. I'm a big fan of her wow. body type. That's uh, I, yeah. I, I guess other people are more jug oriented, but um, yeah. No, I like no fit all the way. You got to go for longevity. <laughs> that's 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 it, baby. Fit. Right. All about fit. She's going to star as a young woman who has been sexually abused by her father. 
Oh, You're gonna Jesus. love this, Woody. This is great. This is perfect. <laughs> Emma Watson top auditioning for dad. Stars. Nude scene. <laughs> <laughs> I want the dad oh. role. Oh, <laughs> There's like a pedo Jesus. incest thing going on here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Look me up. Well, not pedo, but incest is strong. <laughs> well, wait. I, I, how old? Are I'm you suggesting that she was in her like eligible year oh, when she got? Oh, I was assuming. Never mind. I was assuming it was like a current view yeah. of her struggle being, you know, incested or whatever the word is. <laughs> Wincested. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Jesus! The film Christ. is called Regression. For anyone who wants to dig any regression deeper. with an so R. So this is going to be P. sad nudity. Regression with an R, and she's co-starring alongside Ethan Hawke and Meryl Streep. Is Ethan Hawke the dad? The, I don't know, the man. The pedo I, incestuous dad? Maybe so, yeah. That's my Pro role, bitch! That should uh, be me! Now I feel like uh, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they passed me over. I was perfect. Well, that is something to look forward to. <sighs> Not anymore. It's, it's really I don't exciting. know. That sounds sad. And when you can just see still images online, why watch the sad parts? Or you can go, are uh -huh. you familiar with MrSkin.com? I am. Yeah, They're the ones who made the announcement. They were, they were, they were first on the scene. Wow. Really. That's a that's a that's a ridiculous website. They just compile all the uh, like nude scenes from movies of from all the time, and, and they've got categorized and uh, and searchable, and it's like a massive database. I I, I picture They're this. They're doing good I, work. I hope it was started by like a couple of frat boys who were just like, we need to the put guy, this together. It has to exist. Yeah, the guy who like owns the thing and started it, he actually goes on the Stern show a lot, and 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 uh, it, it's pretty funny. They do like a, an award show every year where they name like I don't know one of the categories is best back burger, which is when you can see a woman's pussy from like behind, like <laughs> her, her, her ass cheeks. Back uh, burger. I've never heard that. Term. There's tons of them. Hang on, let me let me let me find a few more here. I've got. I just happen to have this handy. Let's see. Oh, that's good. Best back yeah, the anatomy awards. Uh, now I'm going to be Googling best back burger. Yeah, best full frontal. Uh, that went to Scarlett Johansson this year. I just got burgers. Way back burgers. <laughs> uh, I'm looking. Best full I like frontal. I think, I think we could. you could even maybe play the award show uh, and, and stream it. I'm watching it right now. They seem to be blurring all the nudity. Um, did you pay the $4 a month to get in? No, it's free to... Oh, I think there's a teaser that I'm watching. This costs um, $4 a month? I'm on MrSkin.com slash Anatomy Awards, but I'm... Is there a video playing? Uh, I just hit it. Oh, I see what you're seeing. Yeah, I think you could play that. <laughs> best breast, best butt, best full frontal, best lesbian scene, best TV show, uh, breast picture, that's a category. Celebrity nude debut, nude comer of the year, best ass backwards, best BBW, best boob squeeze, best butthole blur fail, best, <laughs> best butthole blur <laughs> fail, best, yeah, yeah, best lip slip. Oh, here it is. I see it. Best lesbian scene, best TV show, picture, celebrity nude debut, nude comer of the year, like you said, best BBW. Is that big, big beautiful, beautiful woman? woman? Yeah, yeah. Best boob squeeze, butthole blur fail, best, best coin I slot. <laughs> Best left boob only, best light boob, right boob only, nip slip, nip drip. Nip drip? What's a nip what? drip? I don't know. Look at these like, categories. Best well, nude scene like playing a kidding? saxophone. Yeah. Best nude I, I, I while smoking. For someone. Best nude with robotic arm. Um, Who's your favorite what? celebrity? Name, name, just pick a celebrity female. Emma Watson. Well, she, she's that a tough one. Good. Okay. Um, Hang on. Let me, let, me see what, let me see what comes up with Emma Watson. Right. Best triple nipple, God. Triple, triple nipple. nipple. Mega. Yeah, those are there. Um, best side burger, skinny dipping, skinter racial threesome, best thong, triple nipple, best upside down cake. I wonder what that is. Ooh. Me too. Hottest good. masturbation scene, monster muff, and the last one, stretchiest nipples. Oh, why would you want that? Stretchiest. I, I, I'm about to cough up four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> four bucks a month, and you're gonna forget about it. It'll cost you. <laughs> That's what cost, happened to Hulu. Cost hundred dollars to cancel. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I, I forgot about Hulu, Hulu for like three months. 
Hulu is the is the bad Netflix. Like they... I, I, I just canceled mine this last month. <coughs> I can't stand watching commercials when I pay for the service. That's, I... that's the whole point. Oh no! Now that Parks and Rec is over, there's no reason to have it at all. That was the big reason I wanted it, so I could see Parks and Rec as soon as it came out. Kyle's coming and leaving, and my whole scene is getting twisted. Uh oh. I apologize. Does that mess something up? In a big way, yeah, yeah. It okay, does. Well, I, I, I'm going to go pee. I will just mute my microphone. I won't. Uh, you will just be left with this. Okay. Didn't you pee uh, like 40 yeah, minutes right. ago? Get your prostate tested. <laughs> you, you I did. drank. Look, do you see this coffee ago. cup? Uh-huh. You wow, that like... looks like an eight ounce cup. How do you hold it in? <laughs> <laughs> this, holds, this holds four cups of coffee. I drank two of these Gamma Labs here, which is yeah. why I'm so hyped late at night. And uh, and I'm not peeing. I, I am glad, drank... baby. I have drank 32 ounces of coffee and two 12 ounce uh, Diet Pepsi, so I gotta piss again. If that's okay with everyone, I can you do it right here. Excused, I'll fill this motherfucker up if you yes. want. Yes, right, that's what <laughs> I want. It. Do it. That yeah, would be much it. more entertaining. Talk, 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 talk. Fill up your cup. <laughs> fill up your cup, bitch. Let's see it. Let's see it. Whip it out. Come on. Let's see the thick four. Uh, a feeble three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm liking the new. Oh, I did, so, so for people who don't know, we got a new layout. We're using Skype now, which is why the video is improved. But um, my co-hosts can't see me. I I, I no. need two cameras. Huge I think. loss. <laughs> I need two cameras to pull off what I want. And I ordered another one. It was supposed to arrive today, but there's this big snowstorm and it didn't. Bummer. So mm. that's that. The power is out at my new house for two days. Which suddenly has me wondering, you know, should I buy that ridiculous generator? It's always good to have a backup. Yeah, how much? It's like it's like a whole house generator. So if the power goes out, it. I was looking at whole house instant generators. That that deluxe package that does the because I bought a big house. Mm-hmm. It would be close to thirty thousand dollars. Wow, it's a Pocket lot. change. That's is, one is, video that's, of you that's, singing that's poorly like the, online. The Cadillac of of the Mo, isn't there? Can you do like ten, fifteen thousand that'll last for like eight hours or something? So <laughs> they both last for a long, long time because they run on propane, and I have a thousand gallon propane tank. But the other option, something like ten, fifteen, like you said, would also be instant on, but it would only power two of the three sub panels. So certain rooms wouldn't have power. Um, mm. I don't know what else. I think the HVAC and AC would run, but yeah. One thing I'm just starting to research into is solar. So you, I could do a, a solar system that maybe couldn't do the whole house, but it would lower my electric bill every month. Yeah. And, and then you could get solar and wind. Because usually when it's not sunny, it's windy and vice versa. <sighs> I, I hadn't seen that, but it's it sounds like a good idea. Um but the nice thing about solar plus batteries is even though it's expensive, they're all expensive, but it would lower my bill every month. There'd be some possible return. Whereas yeah, if yeah. you're running on propane, there's n- there's no no concept of return. You know, it's, right. it's just... Yeah, it's solar expensive. would eventually pay itself off in like 20, 30 years or something. Or even if it didn't, right? Even if it like paid itself halfway off. I mean, propane doesn't pay itself off in, at all. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. added expense. And a, a lot of electric companies will, I guess, subsidize solar just to help relieve yeah. pressure from their grid. I know in Austin they will pay like half of it or something crazy. So but I'm, I'm just getting started into learning about that. <laughs> but uh, welcome back, handsome. We didn't see Did your penis. Back? We were all disappointed. Mm, shame. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of a narrow. I mean, I of course have seen it anyway. before, but I was really. Yeah. You know. I mean, <laughs> I think I was asleep during that, which is surprising considering the snoring. <laughs> hey, you really do snore quite loud. It's nothing to be. First of all, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's it is snor- old. It really isn't because here's the thing: like, if you farted in your sleep, like really loudly, and it was like gross, like that would be embarrassing. Like, I feel like that would be bad. But the snoring, it's just like, yeah, he snores. Like my dad snored. I'm used to. Putting up with it. I've known lots of people who do, but it. But when when you when you're in the room with one and you realize it for the first time, you're just kind of like, oh, it's gonna be one of those, huh? My okay. nose has been broken many times, and I snore. I. Uh, I'm telling you, we'll go get that plastic surgery together. 
It'll be they'll, we'll, we'll it'd be great. We'll go through recovery and, and everything together. Dude, we should totally do what that. What kind of homo yeah. adventure are you two going on? Getting plastic hey. surgery together? What do well, you get? His, well, what gonna... kind of plastic surgery do they do to make you stop snoring? Butt implants. It'd be a nose job. Yeah. It'd be a nose job. They're yeah, gonna I... have to go in there anyway, so they might as well, you know, make it real. Make give him a perfect nose. Yeah, I have going. a deviated septum. If you look, uh, uh, you guys I, can't I, I've see. I've had but... a deviated septum. I had surgery on it when I was a teen. Yeah, I, I, I had three well. nose surgeries. It's gorgeous now. <laughs> gorgeous. I envy you. I um, had yeah. No, up. my genetics are that of a handsome person. Yet I have this big nose because it's been broken so many times. Yeah. And uh, mine was broken three times with basketballs every time. Really. <laughs> I, mine's been broken. Well, once it was broken in two places, and that was a guy's fist. Another time it was broken in one place, that was a guy's fist. And another time I was like wrestling with a dog and I got head butted. That's the four. And, the dog um, head butted you. Yeah, you know, it was just playful sort of thing. But the dog like arched his back and. Yeah, uh, headbutt. What's that? Just a playful headbutt, like it wasn't mad at you. Right. Well, <laughs> we were like wrestling, like it, like we did it a lot. We enjoyed it. He would you know come by me and like you know, like you could just tell his like body language and stuff was like let's go. He he'd do that thing where he goes down on two legs and and he you know he'd want to wrestle and goof off with me. And in one of the times we did it, I was like hugging him from the back. And he lifted his head real quickly and, and hit me with the top of his head and my nose. Yeah. And um, I love that dog, Dakota. He was great. Taught me to I want to hear hockey. about Wicked Shrapnel's three breaks. Not playing basketball, yeah. right. not being involved well, in yeah. basketball. Just You just got... <laughs> one, well, one was in, in playing basketball. What the... First one was a full someone threw full court basketball across the gym. <laughs> hey, look out! And I'm looking the other way. <laughs> turn, bam! Right. Oh. Here, here, it pop. Right as it, it, it ah. it's full court. And then another one was playing basketball just in someone's backyard and like spin around someone and the chest passed it <coughs> right to my face. Just boom! My nose just exploded. <laughs> Dude, bloody noses. I'm sorry, broken noses bleed a lot. Yeah, like I, I, a lot. I, I wrote my name in blood in his front yard. <laughs> yeah, when I broke mine playing basketball, got elbowed in eighth grade. They had to change practice to half court because it looked like someone had been murdered <laughs> on the side where I broke it. They're like, "All right, this is just gross. Who cares? Just the eighth grade basketball. Get on the other half." The, the worst of my breaks when I got punched. I've told the story before. Walking to the boardwalk, etc. Some of you will remember it. But I was amazed at how much blood there was. Like, like I was in a parking lot, and it was like an entire car space was filled with blood. Like, it, yeah. it was just a ton of blood. And, uh, and I was also, oh, oh, another thing. So I've had my nose broken, and then afterwards, I was kind of like still in it, right? Like, you know, my heart was wherever it needed to be. That time, I... I can hardly explain how it just completely took the fight out of me. I was done. I was calling a timeout. You know, yeah. I was just, I was worthless after that broken. I was just, yeah, I think I was concussed. I don't know, but it was like. It, how old were you the first time, Woody? The first time ever. It was all teenage stuff. Um, oh. Yeah. I was, I, was like, I was like 16, 17. Yeah, I think I was 16. I was 19 when I got the, the worst of them. So that was dreadful. And, and then after that, I would get. Frequent nosebleeds, just like dry air, you know. Oh, just, me too, man. It's the worst. It, it would just bleed all the time. I'm like, ah! And then it finally got surgery and it yeah. never bled again. My First time it happened, I was eight. And I remember having a, a cognizantly having a fear running through my basement as I was bleeding. Like, I'm going to run out of blood. This is how it ends. <laughs> this is how it ends. I'm bleed not going to have... There's the no nose. way. Yeah, there's no way there's enough to come out. Yeah. It's awful. Ah, oh, that sounds terrible. I, I, and couldn't breathe through one nostril at all. That's my thing. I have one nostril that operates on about twelve percent efficiency, and yep. and it's just wow. Bad. I'm glad. I'm glad my mom paid to get the surgery. Then this is <laughs> yeah. this sounds yeah. terrible. Like like I got punched in the nose and it got it just broke. And then we went to the doctor and they unbroke it and they like put it back in place and it's all good. Yeah. My mom <laughs> added an extra surgery. The like the I didn't go to the doctor. Time. I let it what heal happened? wrong. Like she, like I had a bump in my nose from when I was a kid, like just a not good looking bump, not that noticeable. But when I was under, she was just like, you know what? While he's under there, just kind of like shave it, and make it a little, you know, just kind of fix that a little bit. Oh, uh, that's a good mom. That's a good mom. She's right a very there. good mom. Yes. Yeah. That's Is a that good mom. Got, how old were you? Uh, that time I was seven or eight. That's when you got. That's uh, the 
She got you circumcised uh-huh. at the same time as well, right? <laughs> uh, yes, we, we invited the, the rap Two for one over. coupon. Yeah, yeah. Could you, <laughs> uh, down there, yeah. Well, he's under. Just snip some of them. No. Let's <laughs> sip here. No, there are there a couple ca- My mom got depressed when I was 12 and became, um, like, she wouldn't like being called this, but absentee mom is a, is a term that comes to mind. Uh, didn't really cook clean or, or mother very much from when I was like 12 to 18. Jesus, that is like the last third of your childhood. You said that like <laughs> it was a passing thing. Yeah. That's pretty serious. Yeah, uh, that's a shame. Yeah, I kind of like at the time, to- there were times when it was like, bad mom, you're terrible. Well, did she still fight you hand to hand though so that you knew that you- she loved you? <laughs> she still came at you and you know you know with jabs and crosses right really like just didn't. just to show the love we it, oh it, that's... it happened abruptly we we moved to ocean city and um that's when she got depressed the move was bad for her she like, left all her friends and such oh, and man. we stopped having family dinners um we stopped like she stopped checking on my homework or anything like is it would be prior to that i was an awful kid i was just an awful person i was terrible and i would lie and like not do homework and stuff but at the previous school she was sort of on top of me about it you know they'd need like i'd have to get my mother's signature and stuff so i'd just forge it and get caught and keep forging it and it was bad but by the time we moved to the ocean city suddenly like all the parental supervision and checks and balances were gone uh, I had no bedtime, right? So even at like twelve, I'm out till eleven midnight, just like fucking around. Um, I used to sneak out a lot and, and drink, and, but that was at like, well, chucks. That started at thirteen. Um, so, so yeah, she was just, but she was depressed. Like I, I, I would call it. See, I think clinical depression means you've actually been diagnosed, and that didn't happen, but. But it was no joke, you know, she was going through something on her own too, which it took me like into my adulthood to kind of see her side of it. Well, that's a shame. You're going, you're going through that Oops. whole thing with the intruder as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that, that had to be a rough time. I was, um, I was 17 when that happened. I remember because I could drive. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to tell fast the story, forward. fast forward, right, right. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how much detail to add, but. Basically, this guy would come to our house every weekend and rob us. It was typically a Friday or a Saturday. Every weekend? I know, right? So you're thinking... Security's pretty we... lax around the wood. <laughs> Get some fucking ADT. <laughs> Jesus. I know, right? <laughs> like how many times? In total? Every week. 14, maybe? Like a lot. Like we got robbed a lot. And, like after um, one or two... Well, then I'd be staking out waiting. <laughs> we did that. It's funny. Yeah. So the first time we weren't even sure we had been robbed, right? Like my mom was like, yeah, I thought I had money. She, she went to the ATM machine on Friday or Saturday and she would have like an envelope filled with cash. Like, you know, that that's how it used to come. Or she went to the bank and got a withdrawal. And, um, and the guy would just take the cash. And she was like, I thought I got cash, but since it's missing, I'm not quite sure. And then the, the second time we got robbed, she was like, I definitely had cash. There's no doubt about it. It's not just me being you know, flighty or something. The cash is gone. And my brother and I both secretly thought it was each other you know because we knew it wasn't ourselves and and, right. that, and my brother initiated the conversation. He's like, you know, Woody, did you do this? Like, did, you know, are you the guy stealing mom's money? And I'm like, no, I thought it was you. And you know, we both walked away from the conversation convinced that it wasn't an inside job, that we were being robbed. And then probably week, like, I'm making up numbers, but week four or five-ish, one time the, um, my mother's purse was actually found in the backyard with, like, the contents scattered about, but the cash gone. Wow. And, um, and then she started, like, changing up where she put her purse because it, it used to be hung on a kitchen chair. So kind of in the open. And I'm, I'm sure she was still suspecting you guys, too. I don't... If she did, it was never expressed. You know, right. like she didn't really ever you know, accuse us or ask us about it or anything. And um, she started putting her purse in like one of the kitchen cabinets as opposed to like almost on display, hanging off a kitchen chair. And uh, the burglar would find it, steal it. And that would be that. Uh, one time we did a stakeout, like you said, you know, my friend. It, oh, what happened was this. So I used to sleep on the couch a lot. This is another, like, lax parenting thing to me. But I used to just sleep on the couch a ton. And um, uh, the burglar came in one night 
and I had my um, wallet on the coffee table. It was like one of these Velcro surfer wallets. Hmm. The bait. <laughs> no, this wasn't the stakeout. It, he, the oh. wallet was like 18 inches from me. And he literally came in while I was sleeping, opened that- the wallet took the cash out and tossed it on another couch. We had three couches in our living room. You did and catch this scary. guy. Is this going to end with you catching him? Now, let me ask you a question because I never thought of this. At any point, and think hard about this, did you? Did anyone ever consider a ghost? No. <laughs> ah, no, that would have been no. great. Like if he, if I, the the perfect robber, he would be coming in, leaving ectoplasm, and like, <laughs> like he'd be going in the bathroom, like, like huffing, <sighs> like get out, like on the mirror and stuff. Like, yeah, they'll never think it's Jamal. That's not a perfect <laughs> robber. That's just someone terrorizing a family <laughs> and happening upon some wallets. <laughs> a robber is exactly what Woody's describing. In and Sounds out, a good time to me. Like a whisper. It, it that, wasn't that until some balls though to rob you while you're like laying there. Yeah, that, that double whammy of my money going as opposed to my mother's, and the fact that he was I, I in my head I pictured him actually leaning over me. Right, I'm sleeping, probably snoring on the couch, and this guy like smelling your hair. He literally like Not opened the wallet. He was right there looking at me sleeping while he was robbing me, and that like. One, my money yeah. was gone, and two, I felt really violated. Like this I was a big think deal. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if not, this, most of you probably haven't been robbed, but the prior to this, I had seen not movies. while I was in the house. I've had my shit broken into and shit stolen, but not with me present. That's freaky. I had seen a movie prior to this where the woman described this like feeling of invasion and how she wasn't safe in her own home and everything, and I thought like that I wouldn't share that feeling if it were to happen to me. Well, it did happen to me, and I did share that feeling. The fact that my home wasn't a safe zone anymore was a really big deal to me. So um, uh, then we did a stakeout because I got robbed, and I didn't feel comfortable and stuff. And my friends and I had these grand plans. We were going to duct tape into a chair, not tell my parents about him, <laughs> shake a thief <laughs> into his head. and like th- This was the teenage <laughs> mind at work. It's all and- battery. <laughs> You know, we, we didn't really think it through. So 25 to life, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> Kidnapping. Yeah, Conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had all We were going to beat him down and shave him and embarrass him and do all sorts of crazy stuff. But uh, we couldn't be quiet, right? you know. <laughs> After like five minutes, like, I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, so, so we ended up just sitting in our dining room, like talking to each other all night long, and the robber didn't come. But um, one or, time. Like, came and heard you talking and left. This is how it ended. The um, uh, I was I was up super late. It was like four a.m. or something, and I'm watching the um these lumberjack cutoffs. Have you guys seen this on ESPN? Yes. They put like a mm-hmm. motorcycle engine on a chainsaw and just cut wood really quickly. And uh, and I hear uh, the steps. We had a basement, and the steps were creaking, and I heard it like creak, creak. creak. Oh my god, that freaked me out. Yeah, and I'm like like. <laughs> Like suddenly I'm on like like high alert. It's like code red right here. Like, did I just hear creaking? The and, call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> and, 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 I, and sure enough, like because I heard it in like the first three of twelve steps, and like yeah, and then it's it's getting to be like really confirmed that there's definitely an intruder entering my house from the basement. So I head over to the to where the basement door led into the house. And I see his fingers, right? It's it's. A, oh my god! Yeah, it, were they it, long and spindly, <laughs> ghost white? That's when you want to just like cut them off. That was the they were they were spindly. He was a light skinned black guy, and um, I racist. saw I saw right. That makes me racist. So I saw his fingers through the door, like he was pulling it back closed again or something. Like maybe he heard me, or I don't I don't know what the idea was. So I kicked the door on his fingers and then opened it. And the guy was perfect. So 17-year-old me was like a little late to the puberty game. I had just gained a lot of height, but I was real skinny. This guy, though, he must have been like 5'3", 105 pounds. Like he was just a tiny person with no muscle mass whatsoever. And I start screaming at him, motherfucker, <laughs> fuck you, gonna fucking kill me. And, and he looks at me, eyes go wide open. And he falls straight backwards down the stairs on his ass, right? He just, he's like in shock and he falls backwards and tumbles down the stairs. When he gets to the bottom, he races out and there's a door that leads outside. And uh, and I gave chase to about the door, I guess. 
And uh, at that point, I woke my father up by yelling at the burglar. My father goes racing out the back door and chases him in the alley. And he didn't catch him. The guy had a bike. Um, we had a, like a small guest house in the backyard. And he had a bike leaning against that. And he just took that and, and rode off down the alley. Wow. And uh, from there, we called the police. And the K-9 team came. And uh, the police had an idea who it was. So they went to his house like hoping to catch him on his way home and and like nab him in the act with like i don't i don't know what the you know, evidence there'd be but maybe they bring him over and ask me to identify him but uh um they didn't catch him on the spot and the dogs followed the scent like to the end of the block and then it kind of died off i guess a guy on a bike doesn't leave much of a scent yeah. um the story kind of ends with i read in the paper of a guy who fit his description like his height weight skin color um, being charged with like 28 burglaries wow. but no one really notified us that like this is the guy and and such that like i didn't get full closure but i'm pretty sure he got busted and, wow yeah. that that stakeout story reminded me of the guy that got convicted it was an old dude there was kids that were robbing houses in his neighborhood and he got a gun and waited in his basement with the lights out and parked his car down the street to make it look like he wasn't home and just waited there until they broke into his house and he killed them both. And then he got, he, re, the, his downfall was he recorded the audio. He recorded the audio and, and it was, he said like, he was calling him a bitch and calling him names and like shot him <laughs> and they were already disabled. And then he like finished them off. And, <laughs> and they like played you that. Allowed to do that. That yeah, wasn't the guy, it. now that wasn't the same guy who did it in his garage, was it? No, this he was in his basement. Okay, because there was a guy who um, he oh, basically yeah, guy this kid in his goes garage. in his garage, opens the garage door up like a foot or two, and then puts a purse inside the garage within view of the outside. And some poor German exchange student was just walking along, minding his own business, saw it, walked up there, and this kid gunned him down. Yeah, yeah, this he was just hunting people. Well, well, that that one was kind well. Of, he well, was someone. I remember hearing that one. People have been. <laughs> breaking into his garage and stealing stuff, but he did kind of, like, leave bait in that one. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and in the same way, he, like, finished them off. Like, it was one of those things where he, like, shot the guy, and then he, like, walked over and took aim while he was on the ground, like, dying and shot him again. Right. Right. You know? Yeah, well, that's, that's, not, that's not cool. But yeah. Another little piece to my story, it, and it, it altered my view on witness testimony, but I was so close to my guy that if I had reached forward, I could have touched him, right? Like, I could have touched, you know, put my hand on his shoulder. That's how close we were. Yeah. And I got pretty significant things about him wrong. Like, it, I, he was wearing a hat. I knew that. And I, I thought it was a blue hat. And in my head, it was kind of like Dr. Chiz's hat, but blue denim. It turned out to be a baseball cap, also blue with the Harlem Globetrotters logo on the front of it. Because it fell off when, his, when he fell down the stairs. And uh, it was like, huh, like I got that hat really fucking wrong. Like the only thing no. right was it was blue. And um, you'd make uh, a terrible witness. Ha yeah. Have you watched Brain Games on Netflix? It just this oh, reminds I've seen me it. of it. I haven't watched it. But the, but I actually did, watched an episode of that. Yeah, they did just that. They like staged a crime and all these people saw it. And it was like totally different. All these different things that people saw. It, okay, it's like, it's the most, it's an interesting show. But it's so condescending in its own right, and I know you'll know what I mean, where, like, it sets up things where it's, like, you know, those optical illusions where there's, like, a gray panel and another gray panel, and they're like, which yeah. one do you think is grayer? And instead yeah. of being like, actually, they're the same shade of grayness. It's just this that makes it different. It's some guy like, you're so fucking stupid. You <laughs> thought they were different, jackass. And then they like have the robbery happen, and they're asking people who are honestly trying to help. Like, yeah, I think it was a, you know, a young guy with a uh, plaid shirt, maybe a hat. And they're like, you wish. <laughs> and then they're showing everything else and it's just condescending and it's like you could have made this cool but you're being a dick about it you know what i saw that was cool so um you remember the ferguson protests and the shooting and that guy with the swishers and whatever um one of the lead protesters like the guy that was organizing the angry people the police invited him to come and do a drill that they do with new policemen and essentially it was like a shoot don't shoot drill and if you watch it with a critical eye, you can see it was kind of set up, you know, to, to, to create failure amongst the guy taking the test. So the first thing is, this guy has a flat tire. 
And he's completely friendly, you know, and, and the cop comes up to him and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm so glad you're here. I'm having a hard time with this. And he's like, my tire iron doesn't fit on the thing. And he reaches on the back bumper. There's a gun. Pulls out the gun. Shoot, shoot, shoot. And you're like, <laughs> well, fuck, you know, there's a situation right. you didn't see coming. So then the next time there's a, and he's like, now you're dead. Right. You didn't do it right. You didn't you did manage the guy incorrectly. And, you know, you didn't even ask him to comply and you're in trouble. So the next time there's two people fighting. And the cop goes to break up the fight and the guy like puts hands on the cop. You know, he's like pushing on his chest. What's wrong with you, man? Back up. We don't have a problem here. Why are you giving me a hard time? And the cop like shoots and they're like, well, now you shot an unarmed man, right? This right. guy did nothing wrong. He was just you know fussing with someone else and you came up and you killed him. And, uh, and then there was a third scenario, but you're like, aha, I can even see that. The first scenario, the guy seemed totally friendly, then he pulls out a gun. The second scenario, now he's already jumpy, having failed the first test for not shooting quick enough. They invoked a quick shot in the second scenario. And then the third one, I don't recall, but I can see the importance of complying based on watching this stuff. They, they really got the guy to, to do it all wrong. And then he walked yeah. over the same thing. He's like, I'm going to tell my you know followers that... Uh, that you got to comply. The police are in a really tough spot. Yeah, it's, it would definitely yeah. be scary. I mean, they're probably setting them up yeah, to fail. <clears throat> yeah, but they, I guess there are some are scenarios. Problem? Eventually, you're going to run into something that happens like that. You need to be prepared, but don't be so trigger happy that, like, you know, he was shooting when he didn't need to shoot. My, my robbery problem, dude. So I had night terrors after that, right? And uh, You needed a night knife. I had a night knife. <laughs> but not like Kyle's. Kyle, show him your night knife. Night Bam! knife. <laughs> That's what I needed right there. I slept with a knife <laughs> under my bed for like a decade. Like for a long time. Murder the time. darkness in the night with night knife. <laughs> <laughs> I I had these night terrors, this this dream that the, the guy would walk in the door and like his back lit. So I, all I had was like a silhouette and I couldn't like stand up and do anything brave. I was just like in my dream paralyzed with fear as I tried to talk, but I couldn't even yell out. And, and then I would wake up in sweats. And um, it was one of the reasons I like Jackie. She would like, like, you know, Woody, it's okay. It's okay. It's just me. Everything's all right. And, uh, you know, sort of help me cope with my, my nightmares. Which, uh, which circles around stuff. to my fucking general contractor giving the password to my new house to Jamal. Thanks, thanks, Ed. <laughs> well, it's like a, a key pass. <laughs> that was a personal moment. <laughs> it's just like, thanks, Ed. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, fucking I love that. That thing, that's a real fucker road you got over there. Way to not steal anything that nefarious. Gonna, you should uh, change you the size of your ground molding in the night. <laughs> right? He'll just break in and install like mismatched doors. That so would you be... can get into your house with a password, like someone can hack it. Uh, it's the garage door opener has a password uh, you can key uh, okay, in. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got that too. So I'll have to change that. Ooh. Although I, I yeah, ooh. the password we had was my first choice. Now I need to go to something else. I've already started thinking of like things like should I use Fibonacci sequence? You know what? What is that Not thing? Now. For, yeah, <laughs> now. What is that thing for moles? Or I don't know. I've been thinking of different ideas. Just use guest. That's what I use for everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um so yeah, we need to sort the password out. I guess. Fucking a. Um. So I got my uh, I got my paintball gun for the uh, the uh, PKA YouTuber uh, meetup paintball game. Show me! I know it's nearby. Look at that thing! Yeah, it's got let the me what? iPod on it. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Oh, you figured out the zooming under Skype? Yeah. Yeah, you did. You're gonna ruin it's kids' weekends. Got a bipod! Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> That is so, a paintball gun. This is my paintball gun. I've um this is the die dam. Dam is uh die assault matrix. Um I'm not sure what kind of optic I'm gonna put on this thing. I'm going back and forth. Uh I'll put this L can on there most likely. But if I'm able to get my thermal stuff in time and I'm I'm about eighty percent sure I'll have the scope in time for the thing. Uh, then I'm gonna put like an eight thousand five hundred dollar scope on this fifteen hundred dollar gun that's already got about five or six hundred dollars worth of accessories on it. And I think I'll be able to honestly say I have the most expensive paintball setup ever assembled. 
<laughs> you, you, yeah, you need to get that so, scope that, that like automatically will fire once it's right on target. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I'm like a mile away. <laughs> so it's got it's got it's a magazine feed. You can do it that way, and in each of these. Uh, is 10 rounds of first strike rounds if I want. Those conically uh, shaped rifled projectiles that shoot accurately for Very painful. Feet. Very gotcha. painful. Or I can flip a little switch here. Uh, just flip this. Yeah, that forward. And I can go to hopper feed. So I can have like a big 200 round hopper on top. Or my personal favorite. Though I've got to update the software on the gun, apparently. Or, or Where did Jesus you Christ. Get these wonderful toys! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's so <laughs> overpowered. You can go to the fucking <laughs> like 320 round box mag, 28 balls per second. Fucking oh my god! Death this machine. is just pay to win. This is just a pay to win <laughs> game. This <laughs> is a pay to win. That I'm so very powered. excited about the upcoming paintball game. I'm going to put a bayonet on this thing, like a foam one, <laughs> like a foam one, and I'm going to have a, 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 a go. I'm going to have a couple GoPros. I got a GoPro thing that attaches to my back, and it's, so I am like a, it's like a scorpion tail, and the GoPro hovers over my shoulder right here, and I'm going to put a GoPro looking straight through this site, so Can you'll you be able to. Can you link that again, see. Kyle? I'll show it to everyone. Yes, That's amazing. Let me uh, let me get that. So I'm going to have like four GoPros total rocking, and one of them is going to be on the front. So if I bayonet somebody, it's going to be from that point of view as I poke them. <laughs> all right, that and is so cool. I'm just sure. jealous, and all those kids are going to hate you. I have been working I out. I don't want to play with I, Kyle. I, I've it never hurts. I've played paintball before, but I want that. I, <laughs> I'm looking. Would it be tools and accessories? Where the hell is this thing? No. Did you link it yet? Um, is, is that yeah. like a custom design thing, or is that like you can go to the die uh, dance? The, your your whole setup there, that paintball gun. Um, the, yeah, that's you can you can order that offline. It's fifteen hundred bucks. It's called a die dam die assault matrix. Is what the dam part stands for. It doesn't normally ah. come with that scope, and that box rotor is extra. So are the. Um, All right, I'm gonna test something here. If I can switch to, I got like twenty of these. It's going to be... The I'm, die dance. Awesome. So it's Bam. the die, die, assault matrix? Yeah. So this is the backpack that he's going to be rocking for a third-person shooter view of uh, of it. I got to say, I feel like the effort I put into the PKA production value is, is just stepping up. You guys can't see it now, but someday you will. Looks good. Looks yeah. Good. Oh, that's, that's I, like uh, Dr. Octopus. Yes, I'm going to be the scorpion. And That's amazing. it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. I, I'm going to put that on and start doing my runs with that on. I think I should be wearing, like, like running with a gun and everything. I've been mostly on the elliptical and, and, uh, and doing weights, but I, I feel like I need, to, I need to lose as much fat as possible so that I'm, I'm more speedy. So I'm down to 175 pounds from 188. So I, I got a ways to go. I got, I got to get faster. Like my uh, zero to 60 is pretty, my acceleration is pretty, pretty weak right now. But I'm working on cardio right now. And, and I'm going to have a lot of fun when we get to fucking Chicago. I hope a lot of you come out and play with us because I'm really excited to see you all. And ho hope that you are on his team with that setup. I, I would like a lot of you to come too, but especially if you're like not special. Like if you're like 12 years old and you've got a bit of a weight issue, come on out. Come on out. <laughs> we got a spot for you. <laughs> You'll make a great target. Yeah, absolutely. You know, are you nine years old and a little bit frightened? Come play, come play, You're come play. You're going to see me doing like the Matrix cartwheel while shooting and stuff. <laughs> like, I, I was telling Chiz, I was like, you know, I'm halfway considering some gymnastics classes because I really feel like <laughs> if I do that. I feel like if I got a month of gymnastics in, that would really be, be worth it. You can have a one-handed cartwheel down pat. That's if I yeah absolutely a lot of upper body strength some balance I think you know some core strength building I, I think it would be good I, I'd probably be in there with a bunch of twelve year old girls but I mean that's a plus I suppose so I, I'm definitely considering it I could do a backflip into the swimming pool that's about as uh, the extent of my gymnastic ability <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and like get my wings redemption obstacle course set back up so I'm gonna be out there hurtling and running through cream corn and doing my Jeremy pulls really getting. <laughs> I'm gonna <coughs> be ready to roll when when, uh, when April comes around. And did it's you guys see the pushes I put in there? That's what the show looks like now. It, it looks great. Oh, I'm digging it. Yeah. Except that I'm mid blink in one of them. 
Oh. Looked like a maniac. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Yeah, I like oh, that. That, that a does lot. look very nice. I think I like that a lot better. It's a lot cleaner, and uh, and all of our pictures are uh, are much better. Yeah, Quality. crisper. Yeah, real nice. Better. So yeah, I, I'm excited for that thing. Right now, it's it's a bit tentative, but everything is focused on making that thing happen on ap- the weekend of April. Uh, it's like th- let me let me be exact about this. It's uh, the tenth is a Friday, so that's when I'm heading that way. But it'll probably be Saturday, the eleventh and twelfth at Paintball Explosion, just outside Chicago, Illinois. That Very should cool. be cool. Hey, yeah. so I think. Everyone but Kyle and I were vaping. I guess that's just the two of you. Vaping. Dude, vaping is going crazy. It seems like everyone's vaping. What is the scoop with vaping? What? I, I've, I've been doing it since, it's like three years now, maybe. Twenty uh, October Ooh, an OG. October 2012. <laughs> well, I, I smoked for OV <laughs> since I was 18. Like when I turned 18, it's like, I can buy cigarettes now. I might as well do it. <laughs> it makes you cool. And it, it, it wasn't does. even about that. It was just like I'm I'm now allowed. It's like when I turned twenty one, I went to the bar because I was allowed to now, you know. But I think I had been into a bar before, but <laughs> it's like a rite of passage. Like I bought right. a, a lottery ticket when I turned eighteen. I think it was like one of two or one of one I ever bought. Just for the yeah. fuck of it, you know? I like never bought a lottery it. ticket. You mean a stupid tax? <laughs> it was a one dollar, like you know, like the lucky seven that you can't win, and if you do, you win like a fucking pack of Airheads. <laughs> I won, I won eighty dollars one time on like a ten dollar scratch off. You would, you ass. I, uh, <laughs> I, I was leaving Vegas one time after having a great time, and and I won like eight hundred dollars in the airport just sitting there waiting on the plane. Um, nice. I get lucky with the machines every now and then. Not so much with the roulette, though. Not, not. <laughs> I was there for not you, so for much. You demise. I'm uh, lifetime ahead at the casinos. Now, the truth is, I hardly ever bet. You know, like I'm just out. And I think betting, I'm behind. But this is what happened. One night we went. It was me, and then this this other couple we've been friends with forever. The the dentist and his wife. And um, there was a guy there who felt like he was being lucky because Danielle, this other woman, and Jackie, my wife, were there. And he was winning at the craps table consistently. And then he was feeding money to my, I think she was my fiance at the time, Jackie. And, uh, and I wasn't sure, like, a decent proposal had, like, <laughs> recently happened. Like, it was a fresh movie. And I'm just like, I don't know how I'm feeling about this whole thing, but, but it's money. <laughs> and, and I didn't have any. And I, it was really, like, even just like $5, $10 at a time. I, I think he gave Jackie like $190 to just stand wow. there, blow on the dice every so often. And, uh, and I'm right there with her. It's not like she's going to walk away. Or, and, and, but but, but it's it, it, it's, it is kind of a little insulting, though, to you, to like your man. Uh, like. Come on, that was, you have a secure. It's like you blow on the guy's ankles for luck. I mean, come on, he's saying, "Hey, pretty lady, blow on these dice. It'll make me lucky." And he's he's definitely more worried about the dice at that point than the girl. If you get super, uh, sta- super I guess sta- it, it depends on the situation and how his how he's yeah, acting. So maybe so. Yeah, he was. Uh, so he was older, right? I'm gonna call him like 31, and Jackie was probably like 21, something like that. And uh, you know, he just he just liked having Jackie and Danielle, the other girl, like nearby while he played craps. He felt like they were good luck. I don't know what else he was feeling, you know. But <laughs> I I just he was like, feeling something. Yeah, it's just but. But if money. a midget walked by after he won a thousand dollars, you can bet your ass he wouldn't pay that guy to stand next to him. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think he liked having the girls flank on either shoulder. Yeah, but, yeah it, it's like the you know the picture of the casino where it's like some guy like. <laughs> and then there's the two hot chicks, and it's like that's what it's supposed to be. I've still never gambled. I want to try it. You've never gambled? Hey, you're, never gambled. you you're ahead of the game. He's, well, I'm he's technically even. even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I that uh, I don't know. I, it, I even today I'm like, dude, was I selling Jackie? Oh my well, god, not in a bad way. <laughs> you were renting her. Come I on, I was renting her. All right, fair point. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. I also well, got two of the pistols. What am I looking? Oh, nice. those are the um, they fire first strike paintball. Yeah, shit. the magazine fed first strike ones. And uh, I can hook this one up to my cold remote now, so I don't need CO two. I can just keep switch switching mags. I'm really, really excited about this. Wait, you can hook that up to what? How, um, how do you like do it with a coiled remote? Uh, you you screw a little thing in here, and there's a coiled uh, hose that goes to the oh. uh, compressed air on my back, so I can be, go super lightweight with this and just. For people that don't know, the the pistols have a little CO two cartridge, and um, you run out of. It's tough because it. I have a hard time in my head. I'm not that experienced of tracking it. I think a cartridge can fire about two magazines, like maybe twelve rounds total. Does that sound about right to you? Something like that, yeah. And uh, you're like, but what happens is like not much in paintball. In a round, you'll shoot like three or four, and then you just like put those two back in, and then you're like not quite sure if it'll do the whole next one or not or well it's all with these with the tiberius is it's you know the, the co2 goes here and the and and the uh the ammo goes here in your magazine so mm -hmm. i just throw a fresh one in every time um, they, don't, like, they, don't, they don't have drum mags for those pistols <laughs> um I'm I, I'm I just had i had a guy 3d print me a drum mag for my rifle it's gonna sh hold like 50 rounds of first strikes and cool. so i'll be able to shoot those fully automatic so but I don't think there's a drum mag for this. I should probably look into that. So Kyle might do a new cartridge for every magazine, but I think most people don't because a cartridge will be about two magazines, and oftentimes you don't even shoot a whole round. Like, you might shoot two that round. You know, that's all the targets you got, an opportunity to shoot at. And, um, you know, then you're just stuck, like, not knowing quite how many paintballs you have left versus air and stuff. If you have a cartridge, then that's nice. I mean, the, the coil-fed thing is cool because you have virtually limitless air. 40 bucks. Yeah. Cool. That's nice. But, I don't know. I'm looking forward to paintball, but I'm looking forward to the whole trip. I'm looking forward to the steakhouse that night. I'm looking forward to the paintball that day. I'm looking forward to, I don't know, watching movies. Hell, Game of Thrones will be on, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it will. Uh, oh, that... When does it... What, what night no, of the week Game is of Thrones is... Uh, isn't it last week of April? Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. Maybe so. Last time I we were doing Legends, well. I mem remember... <laughs> Is it come on so Sunday? Gay. Joe Lozon and I shared a bed and watched on watched on someone's laptop. <laughs> yeah. And me and Kyle fought in the grass at a Marriott. Yeah, it was, it was a good night. A, we watched that we watched that shit chomping man. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, we had our drinking contest on my laptop like an idiot. Yeah, that was that was Looked a great. all the most horrific things on the world. That's a real good time. I don't remember. Was I there, not there for that, maybe? There. No, you ducked out of most of oh, yeah. the, the gross contest where you were like, I don't want to sit here. Because it was a drinking contest of Kitty sat across the table. We had the laptop face toward myself, White Boy, Kelly, Kyle, maybe T-Mart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe. I, I don't recall yeah, if T-Mart yeah. was taking part. There, and sure. then Kyle was picking, and we were picking the most disgusting videos we could. And then if they detected any semblance of emotion whatsoever, we had to sit there like stoic sociopaths and watch this horrific nonsense. And Don't if we flinch. made a response, we had to take a shot of tequila or a shot of something else. And it was not the best idea in retrospect. No, no. <laughs> it, it sounds <laughs> like a neat idea. It sounds like, But the thing is, like, if I don't feel like drinking... Man, you're such a third wheel, right? Being the like the sober guy at a drinking contest. It, it, you, you just leave. None of us wanted to drink Woody. Uh, <laughs> that's why we had... Oh, that's why we kept our faces straight. Yeah. <laughs> when, when she... Kitty was like, hey, you twitch, you twitch. I'm like, I didn't fucking twitch, and I don't want to drink that warm vodka. <laughs> I'm like, come on now. I did not twitch. Yeah, we just had a bunch of warm Svedka or something So then awful. I'm pissed. I'm having to drink this when I don't feel like I should have had to, so I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> you were getting actually competitive about it. I, I, was I drank a whole bottle of scotch in a live stream last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of scotch? Isn't that scotch? Uh, Glen Morangi. Is that how I say it? <sighs> that's, know, a, that's a popular that's a, thing now the drinking and the live streaming I, and such well, well I, I don't drink too often and I didn't intend to drink the whole bottle it just kind of happened over a period of like four hours but by the end of it I was pretty damn shit faced <laughs> I could not hang no. I, I didn't even remember going to bed or stopping the live stream glad I didn't do anything stupid that would get my channel shut down but and I, <laughs> But I posted like the last thirty minutes of the live stream on my channel, and I was, I was pretty shit faced, calling everyone motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
That's an expensive <laughs> evening. That stuff's like, isn't it like 60 bucks? Uh, um, uh, it was like 40 bucks maybe for the bottle. Oh. Yeah, but I'm jealous. That, that's going to be a fun trip for you guys. <laughs> Well, there's another trip that, that I was discussing uh, maybe after this one, and, and it's even less uh, concrete than the... Uh, Is it paintball-related? Uh-uh. No, it, oh. would be, it would be the survival trip. Yeah, 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 okay. I, I, it might be too early to talk about that. It's, uh, do people take a tally of the things that we talk about that don't happen? I well, it, add this it's, the it's, what, what's the score? Uh, I think we've done about three things and not maybe twelve. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it depends. All right, let's so let's let's go through some. So bug fights. I was worried <clears throat> that we were gonna get in trouble for like basically making bugs fight to the death. It seems like bug torture, and nobody are, wanted to are, house are fucking like sand spiders. Right activist though. Well, if you know, you're putting it on the internet, and I could, I just didn't want yeah. it to become a thing. I, I, I can just see I've got this YouTube channel where like a scorpion is like stabbing a tarantula in the eyeball while like, and I'm giving it a, a you know, sound effects like, no, not my eyes, not my eyes, mm. yes, take it in the <laughs> eye, take it in the eye, you whore. <laughs> and you know, it's it's funny and it's hilarious, but somebody's just like calling the bugs rights activists, and they're they're all outside my house picketing and stuff. I don't want any, I don't want to take any chances here. So that's nobody all I'm cares about bugs. Also, not nobody would care. I, Peter's gonna be talking about chickens, and then a bee lands on him. Like, save the chickens, save hook and, <laughs> and Kitty. <laughs> and Kitty was very anti, like you know, s sand scorpions living in the house, and like tarantulas and and all that shit. Because you know they get loose. You just gotta burn the fucking house down. So. <laughs> I've got this fucking terrarium. It's in the other room. I even bought some sand for it, and I had all these ideas for like cool backgrounds to do. It's a cool concept. It'd be a real fun project to do. But I'm still worried about having deadly creatures in my house and torturing them to death, essentially, because I wanted no, to put the hazards in there, like in uh, the running game or the running man. It wouldn't be deadly. You wouldn't get like actual venomous creatures. You'd get that just was, like the like, big, yes, scary feet down creatures, you know? <laughs> That one didn't work out, though. Uh, however, we, like we did our we, we totally went on the survival trip. We made that we made that happen. I just I just got very ill, and there are people who don't believe I got very ill. It was awful. No, he got ill. Yeah, yeah. I it tried to awful. record it. I what tried to record you know? vomiting like a good friend would, and um, when I held the camera up, and it, it wasn't so dark that I couldn't see. But on the camera, it was pitch black. Yeah. Like, if I was gonna fake being sick, I'd have, I'd have been like, "All right, come here, I'm gonna puke now." Like, <laughs> something like that. Like, yeah. I was really sick. It was it? a full was moon, like a stomach bug, and it was so, like foggy out under a full moon. So to my eye, it almost seemed lit. You, but, you guys were like drinking out of streams and stuff, were you? He swallowed a bunch <laughs> of turtle shit. I, I think I swallowed some river. So swallowed what? River water. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. I, that's all I can imagine. That. Do you think that's what did it to you? Or were it you thinking that you were sick beforehand? Eaten. Maybe. I don't know. To be honest, I, I, I really don't. Mm. I just know. I just know it felt awful. And I was, I was still not well. Like you know. Yeah. When, and and when you got home, you didn't just bounce right back. You were sick for like, yeah. a, like it, in retrospect, totally the right idea to bail. Yeah. It was. Uh, I was really sick. But I've got an idea for another survival trip, that would be even cooler. And I already have like wheels turning, and people are being asked if uh, they would have us. It would be a, going to somewhere really cool. Yes, mega cool. I, I, I'm, I'm clued in to the details of this. We'll see if yeah. we can make it happen. Yeah. How many hours did you guys make it in the wilderness before Kyle's, you know, <laughs> dysentery? I mean, we awful were threatening experience. 24. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that movie, like 128 hours. Kyle's version is like 91 minutes. <laughs> 91 minutes in the wilderness. It was rough. <laughs> it really was. I, I might have died. If I had it just shows the clock on his his watch just slowly ticking, like 3 p.m. in big yeah. letters. 3:08, and he's like, Ugh. it couldn't have gone any worse. It really couldn't have. I, no, I was just I, like I could have dealt with hunger or, or anything, mm -hmm. but it was just like intense nausea, just puking my guts out. I, I drank was, out of a creek when I was a young teen, and remember having some. Some explosive internal combustion coming out. Oh, of my oh head. Yo, young, young teen, young teen. How old is young teen? Because the fact that 13. you use teen, that's inexcusable. You just drank out of a dirty stream. <laughs> no, it wasn't dirty. It was in the is winter. Austin, in Texas. There was God, he's got a woman's bladder. It was, it was a uh, clean-looking water. 
and I thought it was just, you know, snow melting. It's snow water. <laughs> you saw yeah, it, it in all the was, movies. Yeah, there was, there was bad things in there. That's my oh, stomach. Uh, yeah, so, so what else is on the list of things we talked about doing? Um, you know, there's Fat Lincoln. That was a thing we were going to do. Um you were going to fight that guy at PAX like four years ago. Never did that. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. He didn't want to. <clears throat> I wonder how obviously Jesus is doing nowadays. Oh, that's who that was. I forgot. Yeah. I, I forgot who that was. <laughs> I, I don't know if he shut his channel down. I haven't looked in ages, but he stopped uploading. I remember he, he basically did a thing where he said, like, it, he's depressed or mentally ill or something and then he would get better if you guys funded a vacation for him to go to Europe <laughs> and uh <laughs> and <laughs> I, I would well like you know that. technically he might get He's, a little better yeah. for two weeks I don't know <laughs> and uh and that's the last I've heard of him wow yeah um huh. I, I uh, what do we have here what is what? that is that he has a so many toys. It, is that is the, it, the turkey is, shoot gun thing? I I might have. Oh, is that like the sniper paintball rifle? He has a hunt shotgun. Gun? He has a shotgun with like an I don't know, like eight twelve foot barrel something like that. Yeah, is that the punt gun, Kyle? Kyle, you're muted. What? Yeah, we don't hear you. This is uh, this uh, is my twelve gauge pump that's uh, got the super crazy long barrel. So How long is uh, that barrel? Uh, I'll give you some. I'll give you some reference. Long enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too long. Is that the, that's the shotgun that you brought out that day? Yes. But it's red now. It wasn't red before. It's red. It's been painted. Uh, hang on a sec. I don't like it that way. Kyle does stuff to his guns that other people don't. Like he'll just like you know what I need a gold AK and he'll spray paint that shit. <laughs> oh my god. So this will be a cool way to get an idea. So here we go. <laughs> Dear God, it's uh, it's like impossibly long. <laughs> like, here, hold, hold it by the stock like you're a soldier that like that. I want to see how much it extends past your shoulder. Oh, hang on, I'll stand back here. Wow. So, for people that don't know, there are these shooting competitions where you need to get the most amount of pellets onto like a flying target. Look at that thing. Even, still can't even see the top. Yeah. Above, above his head. <laughs> He's trying to touch it with his hand. About to um, spin on it like a stripper pole. <laughs> and by having a long barrel like that, it keeps the pellets together. So if you shoot it well, then all the pellets get on target. Well, that's ludicrous. Yeah. It, it's for a particular kind of For home defense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, if you well, live in a so, long hallway. Yeah, Kyle, can you play? explain what that gun is for? I did a p like poor job at it. Shooting turkeys at a thousand yards? <laughs> uh, they, have this, they have a competition called a turkey shoot. Oh, and, yes, um, yes. You're not actually shooting any turkeys. Your prize is a turkey. They usually, they usually do them around Thanksgiving. And they'll take like a, uh, a poker card. Or uh, you know, they'll draw a dot on a pie plate. And they'll, they'll have the target at 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards. Everyone uses the same ammunition. You fire one shot at the target, and whoever gets the most BBs in the designated area wins the turkey. So the goal is to shoot a very, very tight pattern of shots so that you've got more in the center. And a barrel like that does that very, very well. Do they give you a live turkey that you get to shoot, or just like a butterball yeah, turkey? Like a butterball turkey. <laughs> oh. So have you competed <laughs> with that gun in this competition? I saw that gun in a gun store, and I said, I'll take one of those. <laughs> um, I, I have, I've only shot it in the field at, you know. I've shot a lot of stuff with it, but never, like, competed with it. I really should. I mean, I will. I probably will this year, now that you mention it. It'd just be silly. Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole there, there's the whole no rule on how long the barrel can be? No. No. So and why not Any longer? more than that doesn't <laughs> seem like it would be distance? functional. From where you're standing or the front of the barrel? Because it good seems question. like yeah, it seems like you could get a barrel that touches the playing card at some point. Yeah. <laughs> if you're he man and can hold up, you know, fifty pounds of steel. Well, they, I mean, what are the rules, right? Way? Can you go inspect the target? Maybe prop the barrel on it and then walk back. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, it's, I was a kid the last time I competed in one of those. I was like ten or twelve, so I don't really remember the rules, but. 
that thing's definitely the way to go because I've, I've shot it against my own like extra extra full turkey chokes and that thing beats them awesome. huh. what's in your hand now what do we got there I don't know if I've shown this one on the on the show yet. This is my uh, my Nighthawk, uh, my mm. AAC edition Nighthawk. Uh, it's a 1911, um, and I've got a Osprey 45 suppressor on it from Silencer Co. It makes it very very quiet, and That's you can see awesome. it's not a uh, round uh, suppressor. It's square, it gives it more volume. Why do you need a silencer? Um, looks pretty cool. I'm just being this, an asshole. I hate yeah, that oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I like silencers because you don't have to wear ear protection, and you can kind of casually talk back and forth with, with people. Like, yeah, yeah, watch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was cool. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. And like, especially with the 45 ACP, because they're subsonic, so the rounds are not breaking the sound barrier. You can suppress them down to the point where they're about as loud as a paintball gun. That's how loud this one is. And um, when I when I put some water in here to, which makes it more uh, effective, it's. It's a little bit. It's even a little bit quieter. You can shoot one of these in a house, and maybe somebody at the other end of the house probably wouldn't even notice. It's wow. really quiet. Wow. Yeah, and it doesn't Piers sound Morgan like a shot. would not approve. <laughs> Piers Morgan well, would disapprove of any of those fun guns. Well, I definitely approve. I think it looks real cool. And and they uh, mm. they kind of punishered it out last time I got it coated. So it's got a Punisher uh, helmet there, and they That's they made awesome. their front sight red. I love your toys. It's kind of yeah. unique. Thank you. <laughs> And for the first time ever, I have a couple guns. Yeah, you do. On nice. the show. Yeah. I so, got a three fifty seven. Is your girlfriend's carry? She this packs is her carry. Like <laughs> yes, she does. She is a three fifty seven, and it, it's not like your tiny little J frame either. That's that's. I think it's a K. Uh, that, that's a full size gun. Yeah, yeah, it's it's solid. And then I've got my, not carry, because it would be ludicrous to carry this if you're not a Navy SEAL who has <laughs> room to just carry it. My SIG P226 Mark 25 chambered in 9mm, 15 plus 1. A lot of fun to shoot at rodents with, or really anything, but not oh, well, anything that's appropriate. I was, I was shooting one of those um, when I was in Texas. I shot a rabbit with it. I, uh, I liked it a lot. It had a laser and a flashlight on it. It's pretty cool. I don't have a laser. I don't have anything on it. I, but I feel like I'd look kind of like a tool if I put something eh, on the rails. You know, it's you know? pretty nice, you know, if you're actually clearing a house or something like that. You know, you're, you're looking for somebody, making sure there's not a boogeyman in the closet. It's nice to have a light on there because you can, you know, a lot of those lights you can tap them twice and it's like pulsating mode that just blinds the fuck out and disorients anybody that you might shine it upon. Kyle, will you yes. tell your house clearing story, the most recent one? Um, my house clearing story. You told it on PKN. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you just want me to pick up? Um, you know, I want, I want the long version because it's awesome. All right. So all right. I don't. Oh, all right. Let's, uh, let's wicked. let Wicked Trap. <laughs> 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 I got. It. Fifty, 50 round drum on my Glock. With <laughs> 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 so well, the This I, I do but with my, my concealed carry. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that thing presented into evidence. Like, <laughs> that's a, that's a trial. He, he bayoneted the man three times, Your Honor. Uh, you, got, you got your back up. <coughs> is that a 32 round? This is 30. The other one's 50 round drum. Good lord. What kind of Glock is that? It's a G19. <coughs> 19. Is that the 9? That's the 9, What is right? that? A 9? Yeah. That's the subcompact 9, right? Or the compact it's, 9? It's not compact, though. It's, oh. it's it's not as long a barrel as the 17, I don't think. But Right. The 17 like is the full 17. size. I know. The 17 fits my hand better, but the 19 is very... And the 19 is a choice of a lot of people, it seems. Yeah, I think it's... It's the it's smaller than the 17, right? Both the barrel yeah. and the handle part. The, the, yeah. Yeah. I lost them. People are going to lose all credibility. Okay, Those so where do you want to way. start with this with this story? I want do you, you want to start? start at the they were telling you about intruder issues? Okay, so I went um, I went to Texas this week and uh, and I was hanging out. Yeah, on Texas. This, on this really, it was nice. I drove right past you. <laughs> uh, I was hanging on this really big uh, wild game ranch that's on like the the Mexico border, pretty near it. And they were telling me it's eighteen thousand acres, so it's an enormous place. And they were telling me like. On the end of the property, there's an old shack where, uh, like, the illegals would sometimes make a pit stop there, and there was some old mattresses in there, and you know, the, maybe they'd store water in the trees, and they'd have. He talked about there was a, they would sometimes post a lookout in a tree, so if 
they would see the dune buggies heading out that way and they would, you know, run away or whatever. But they'd see that, you know, the Mexicans would write their names on the walls on the inside that they'd pass through there and such. So he said that we were going to ride out there. We were going to check on it. We we're going to see if we could catch any. And if we did, we we're going to turn them over to border control. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I've been along for the ride thus far. So <laughs> we all arm up. I've got a uh, flea automatic, like M4, like, um, I don't know, whole modular laser system, green laser. Um, fully automatic, uh, red dot sight, suppressor, um, got the thing in a, in a harness. I've got it like, you know, attached right here, really tight. We're riding, we're riding along in the buggy. We finally get all the way out there and it's a rundown shack. It really is. And he points to the trees. Like that's where they, we think they'll put like a, a lookout and you could see they were like, <clears throat> there were some steps that kind of led up the tree that somebody like tacked against the tree. And I was like, uh, uh-huh. he said, well, who wants to clear the house? And I was like, fuck i'll go all right let's do this so I get my fucking M- m4 i kind of crouch you gotta like go really low to get into this thing you gotta like bend over and go under some fallen beams so i'm going in there i'm checking corners going left and right creeping along through there i'm i'm it, my seriousness level is probably at like a six and a half out of ten i'm paying attention to what i'm doing trying not to make any mistakes and I am conscious that there could be somebody in here, but probably not, right? So I, I go into the back room. I can see there's a bathroom, and I kind of peek in the bathroom. The light's reflecting off the mirror so I can see the, where the light's bouncing into. Like, All right, nothing's in there. Go to this last back room. I check left first, and I, and I should have known better than that because I, I switch back to the right, look over here in this corner, and there's a guy, six feet tall, ski mask. He's got an assault rifle, and he's got oh, it pointed. What? right at me like right here and my gun's kind of pointed low still and i'm just like <gasps> and it's a fucking oh, dummy it's a fucking oh, dummy oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, i'm ready to blow this thing away like i'm about to light you up with some ss 109 from belly button to head and it's a fucking like dummy holding an airsoft rifle that's an m16 style and they've painted it all black and it was just they set him up they scared. set him it, up it, it didn't scare me that bad i didn't scream i just went <laughs> I what? sent my bu- I sent my buddy in there with like a whole story though. I was like, "Yeah, man, go check that back room. They- there was a trap door in the bottom. You could see, dude. There was somebody out here like a minute ago. Like maybe they went down that trap door and like went out the back or something." And he's like, "Oh shit!" He- he's he's got his hand on his pistol on his side. He's kind of he creeps around, looks in that corner. He's like, "Ah!" ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so nobody it was a- shot the dummy. It nobody shot the dummy. It was a really good gag. Now, would uh, shooting it, the dummy be considered like a, a a bad thing, a rookie mistake? That'd be really bad if you yeah, made that error. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to be looking for yeah, bad. You should bad have move. fully identify your target because it sounds like that dummy had the jump on you, and that yeah. your recognition yeah, would have got you killed. Dummy would I would have been dead anyway. Dummy, dummy got me got me uh, looking the wrong way. Yeah, I clear that room well. Wow. Well, how do you know what to check right or left first? I mean, I should have I should have peeked it. I should have looked in the left corner in a way that didn't expose me from the right, and then did the inverse. Mm, okay. I, I, I went too far into the room to check the the left corner. He oh, just so you had practically walked in the room before you checked the other side. Yeah, I, I was you know because I was like half assing it, and I, uh-huh. I have places where they told you the right way to do it, you know, and I've cleared kill houses before. So like I was, I, it was it was a real rookie mistake. I was a little, I was minorly embarrassed, but it was like you know it was a dummy back there. The same thing happened to everybody that walked back there. Like one of the guys there had been, um, I don't know where he had served, but uh, he he had some military experience, and he's talking about going back there. There used to be a Troy Aikman back there, like like you know with football <laughs> and all, and, uh, like getting ready to throw. And he, he's like, yeah, you know, I walked in there. I went, I, I, I he's like. Flip, he's like, I got ready. To, I flipped my safety off, was ready to fire, and but, 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 he, but he had his hands like this, and we're trained if we see hands not to shoot. And he's like, he, he was smiling at me with that big smile. <laughs> he was like, oh. Oh, um. <laughs> and they had done it to another guy who was like there as a hunter or something, and it had almost given him a heart attack. He came out like walking backwards, like out of the building, like hey somebody in there, hey somebody in there. <laughs> Yeah, there's somebody in there, and they're like, whoa, 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 like having to try to calm them down. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've never cleared a house like that. Like, I've I've heard, gone bump in the night and cleared my own house, but I don't have any training. I'm told that to really clear a house takes a while, like 45 minutes. You know, to check every closet under every bed and not expose yourself. Like, they, there's a process, and it's long. Mm. I don't know. And then when the SWAT team did my house, it didn't take that long. It was a bunch <laughs> of They were probably not... 
Well, from, after they just found yeah. out it's not for real. That was the first time, though. They, they weren't for sure that it wasn't. Yeah, I was the first person well, in my area to get swatted. Well, if it ever happens well, again, now you know, just oh yeah, put a leg in the air and <laughs> smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Troy Aikman style. No, that was really funny. That guy's got a good sense of humor. I, uh, I I didn't see that coming, and it was so legit too because like I'm already armed up, you know. I got I got a helmet on and everything. Like we're we're, we're kind of playing at war out there anyway. We're you know we're shooting pigs with machine guns. That's the idea. So like kind of in military mode when you start when somebody tells you to clear a house and th there might be bad guys in it, and then there he is. It was a real shock. It's funny. Well, <sighs> was that caught on film? No, that was not uh, caught on. No. <laughs> I uh, I had an interesting. How much more do you think? I, because I told the full story about my Texas trip on PKN, and I definitely don't want to retell the whole thing. But is there any any other parts that you think I should tell, or do you think we should just leave it on PKN and have it be a PKN thing? Uh, no, I want to tell some more. I'm trying to think of some of the cooler stuff. Like, um, all right, so go on. We're all right. So I, I went out to Texas to uh, to film a thing. I still can't talk about the main project we were filming on because um, that's not done yet, but. I was on an 18,000 acre uh, wild game ranch called uh, the Ox Ranch. Uh, it's, it's out in Texas, a couple hours from San Antonio. And um, the guy that owns the place took us out for a ride uh, on the last night we were there. And there was one point, like, riding along in like this Polaris six person ATV, just hauling ass down dirt roads, like bumps everywhere. And just hanging on for dear life, you know, with guns and everything. And he's playing uh, Little Wayne, like, this is my gun walk over the, over the speakers on this thing. And it's got big, bright LED panels. And as the music's playing, we're hitting these bumps, just hauling ass with the gun and everything, just hanging on for dear life. I look, and there's a whole herd of zebra, like, <laughs> hauling ass, running away from us. Zebras and zonkeys, which are half zebras, half donkeys. And it was wow. just such a weird, bizarre, like, I was like, I've never done this before. Like, this is <laughs> insane. Um, let's see. I could show the camel uh, video. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Tina, oh, shucks. <clears throat> yeah, it's almost like where I wish four I could hours for me. Big screen on Kyle. So, what is this? What's the story behind the camel? Um, uh, there's lots of crazy animals on the ranch. There's kangaroo. There's uh, there's a dozen different kinds of like deer that I don't under don't I don't know what they are. There's, there's these pronghorn things. There's wildebeest, um, these red stags, uh, these watusis, which are these enormously horned uh, bulls, um, and there's a there was a camel. So let me. Uh, um, sharing the ox ranch photo gallery now. I think I see the enormous horned things you're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's zebras. All right. Let's go back to the other. Kyle has a bigger screen. <clears throat> All right. Careful swiping across. Vertical video, man. Shh. <laughs> camel in here. Camel. Oh, yeah. I'll get you a big daddy camel in here. I'm going to get you a bath first because you dusty. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm coming. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. What if it bit my ear off right now? That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> this thing. It loves me. You're delicious. <laughs> so this is a softy animal lover, but based on my dog and his dog, it's not always returned. No. No. That, that, that camel's name was Sushi. It was the most friendly of the animals they had there for, by far. And it was uh, really cool. It'd hang out and like, lick your ear. And they've got like his articulating upper lip that's like this. And he's just like, just like all over you, like licking you in. A, a cool. lot of camels can be assholes, though. I've seen a lot yeah, of I've heard videos that. I was, of I was kind of wary. <laughs> uh, they had everything there. There were so many. I saw like thousands of deer. There were thousands of deer. I found a fossil, too. I found this. Uh, this is a snail fossil. I don't know how old this thing is. Several million years. Get it carbon uh, <laughs> That is really audacious. Several million years. Yeah. <laughs> it is. You, know. you, you, you know that because snails are no longer around. It's a fossil. How long how <laughs> took this motherfucker? I know. To I know. I'm being snow. a dick. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Found that. How'd you find that? 
Um, I was just walking along looking for fossils, to be honest. That's what we were doing. There was um, the, the geology out there is really cool. There's lots of chert, uh, lots of flint, um, sandstone, a lot of sedimentary stuff. And uh, they've done a bit of construction work. So, so a lot of that's like dug up and you can see where rocks are broken. And there's a lot of uh, smooth, like smooth uh, round stones and we'll crack them open. And you'll, you'll see uh, little crustaceans and worms, like fossils like that. So we just kept looking for, we're honestly looking for this. Like, like this is exactly the kind of thing I was looking for. This or a trilobite or a scorpion, you know, something like that. Uh, there were allosaurus footprints. We found those uh, fossilized where a pair of allosauruses were walking up a creek bed and it looks like they separate like this and the theory is that they were trying to encircling some prey maybe some teamwork is that the going one on. where you put your hand in it yeah uh, it's that's it, pretty awesome i thought really? that was something fake that you made like as part of a video shoot no that was a that real allosaurus footprint perfect. yeah that's a real allosaurus footprint yeah so, so it's like in rock now it's in rock yeah yeah <sighs> um, that's pretty awesome it is really awesome I saw a lot. Oh, we went. I, I could talk about the cavern thing. That'd be interesting. He um he came to us and and he'd been telling us how he liked to explore these caverns on the property, and he was asking if we wanted to go. And I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like so, on the last night we were there, one of the last nights, um, we uh we all ate dinner. We had a private chef, which was just amazingly wonderful. This guy named Eric. Eric, you're a badass. That food was so fucking good. It was the best food I'd ever had. Every meal. Um. So so he uh, the owner came and had dinner with us. And then we all went out, got in these six-man ATVs, and went driving way out into the property. And we were we went to this cavern. Uh, we we walk up this uh, this hill. They call they call them hills, but it seemed like a mountain to me because it was like a 15-minute walk up loose loose slidey rock, like the land of Mordor or something. And we get up to the top and we walk along this thing, and there it is. There's a hole in the ground about the size of a manhole cover. Like you could reach your arms around this thing, and leading down into this pitch black hole in the ground it's it's this is a this is midnight by the way it doesn't matter what time you go because it's so dark down there leading down into this hole is an emergency ladder it's aluminum rungs connected together by like yellow um like strap material i'll show you um exactly what i'm talking about and so the owner goes down first and i go down right behind him um this picture was taken at the uh at the bottom of the hole um looking up so you can kind of get an idea of how deep what kind of ladder and all so you it's it's just strap mm -hmm. connecting those aluminum rungs and you just go up you go down 30 feet first when you get to the bottom you get on your hands and knees and start crawling go a few feet and then the cavern opens up and uh it's just a fucking wonderland of ridiculousness stuff it's kind of hard to tell but that's kind of what that's what the floor looked like in one part um like yeah stalactites and yeah stuff. stalactites and stalagmites um didn't he give you a, a stalactite to take home with you yeah he did yeah he gave me a stalactite <laughs> that's, uh, that's fucked up it's like yeah. here's a stalactite it's yeah, taken it's, uh, tens of thousands of years to form here. It was already broken. No. Up. <laughs> okay. And, and, okay. <laughs> although, to be honest, like I, I stuck my head up too too uh, far at one point when I was shouldn't have, and I broke one off. It was about like this. It just like stabbed me in the top of the head. So if I get it's, cavern disease, you know that's how it happened. Yeah. Um, but looking around down there, we all had powerful flashlights. But when you turned them off, <clears> it was so dark that like you couldn't see your fingers in front of your face. We saw these black scorpions like crawling on the wall. These white. Uh, uh, like crickets, like crawling around in the the dirty, grimy floor of this thing. And back in the corner, you could see where the the moisture, the water that was dripping down into this cavern, the moisture that created it, is escaping down through this like soil-like area. So I think when I go back, what we were discussing is get going in there and digging that out with some small shovels and and going down into it and seeing if it opens up to a bigger cavern. So I'm pretty excited about doing that next time. Um, Hope you gotta have like some ropes and stuff to tie yourself off to things or. Are you just in there free It'll roaming? Drop off. It'll be more like a tunnel. He, a lot of the the other caverns he talks about. You know, you'll be crawling along, and then it'll just go up, and then you'll crawl along some more. Like, uh, I went into another. Ca I went into two caverns total, and the other one I went in, there was a lot of that where the walls were just kind of like moving together, and just like you'd go. I would put my my back against one wall, and my hands and my my knees against the other one. Shimmy up. It sort of like shimmy up, and I got like bruises, like. Like all over, 
my knees. All over your porcelain legs. Well, they don't, they don't, get, to, they don't get to see the light too much. And they stay covered up. But anyway, uh, I like shimmied up like, I don't know, 10 or 12 feet until I was looking down into a hole. When I shined my flashlight, and I could see my buddies. And I went maybe, I don't know, 50 feet farther than anybody else had ever gone. And, but I couldn't go any farther because you needed climbing gear. But it was just a ridiculous experience. It sounds scary to me. Like I think about like, like what hypothetically I do there. I feel like a man with my responsibilities shouldn't be doing that. You're like, oh, I shimmied up a giant muddy wall and looked down a hole at people. And like, if there was a collapse there, it's no easy help. If, if the cavern collapsed, then I would just die instantly. But if I fell, it was one of those things where I was just gonna get pinched between two walls, and they just have to get me out. It was. Oh, that... they just have to get you out. What right. if you slide through there and they can't? Have you ever seen the descent? <laughs> yes, I, and I brought it up to them. Like, as we were going out, I was telling them, I was like, what, you haven't seen The Descent? I watched it like two weeks before I did this shit, I swear. Uh, <laughs> That's the one with the all-female cast, right? Very good movie. That movie sucked. It was awful. Look, the whole movie was set up that there was going to be some sort of wet t-shirt scene, and it never happened. Uh, it was an okay movie. <laughs> Just to play the middleman. <laughs> a very, very scary movie. I, uh, I like it a lot. I like the fact that it's all women. Yeah, uh, like four or five sexy women go into a very wet cave and die one by one and nothing sexy happens. That's like if you watch a superhero movie and they all fall into a pit and immediately Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, you know, Thor, all of them are like, oh my God, this cavern is enchanted to take away all of our cool powers for the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's <laughs> and then that's it. Yeah, it, it's just oh well, shit. Not really. It it, it wasn't a bad movie at all. I no, it wasn't it. a bad movie, but it, I I definitely felt like it was totally missing the wet t-shirt factor that it was supposed to have. Terrible. That God intended for it to have. No, that was a great movie. That would have taken scary. away from the scary though. Very scary. <clears throat> and it was a scary fucking movie. Oh right, because so many movies that were supposed to be scary, you know, the boobs ruined it. It does. It takes you out of the moment. Uh, boobs no. have never ruined anything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah. You boobs and death go hand in hand. Damn near close to ruining the NFL. <laughs> trying to, what are we talking about? What am Breast I missing? cancer awareness. Oh. When they make them all wear like pink stuff and it's like, why is this so disingenuous? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, marketing. Yeah, it oh, really Kyle, should be the, prostate cancer. They, they uh, No, it should just it should just be cancer. They should all wear brown straps. Or no. Yeah. No, just no. Just nothing. Just everybody <laughs> knows just about it. Game. Everybody yeah. knows about it. If there's some crazy new uh, you know, AIDS cancer hybrid, raise awareness for that. <laughs> because I'm not aware of it if it's out there. But if it there's nothing that I'm not aware of, you know? Yeah, they need to raise awareness for whatever the fuck got Kyle in survival trip, like uh, Turtles Revenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Turtles Bane. Yeah, Turtle Bane. That's what it was. It was Turtle Bane. Like it was awful. It really was terrible. Your tongue was like swollen for a week or something. The right? roof of my mouth. <laughs> no, the roof of my mouth broke out with these in these like painful like sores. Wow. Was, right, like you went to the doctor several times. Yeah, whenever I would eat, like, the roof of my mouth would be incredibly, like, I couldn't eat. Like, I remember, like, I was so hungry, obviously, from the survival thing that I wanted food. And, but I drove all the way from North Carolina to Anderson, South Carolina, which is, like, 30, 40 minutes from home. And I stopped and got, like, a burger and fries. And I ate, like, two fries. And the pain was so bad in the roof of my mouth, I was taking napkins and, like, dipping them in my soda and, like, scrubbing the roof of my mouth, thinking that I had gotten some sort of, like, food allergy or something. Well, thank God you dipped it in your soda first. Yeah. <laughs> I needed liquid. I needed liquid. I had to get that out of there. Just, ah, trying to make it stop. It hurt so fucking bad. So I didn't oh. eat that night. They, they didn't tell you what that was? Um, uh, any of you amateur physicians out there can diagnose what Kyle had, let us know. It was real bad. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it lasted like a week and the roof of your mouth had sores on it and you were vomiting. Yeah. And I don't know what else. That's about it for that one. I'm always getting sick. Did you have some sort of hives at the time, or that could have been an unrelated that thing? That was later. Yeah, that was unrelated. That's when like all I lost all the skin on my hands, and I was on prednisone for for months. Yeah, that was a fun time. Damn. How about that that food picture you tweeted us? Because of everything you sent, that was the thing I was most jealous of 
that you got, you just tweeted in our group text like "Private Chef," and you like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, delicious, man, we had a delicious, delectable looking. What meal. was fun? So I've been to Morton Steakhouse outside Chicago, and it is amazing. It is one of the finest meals I've ever eaten in my life. Kyle went to Morton Steakhouse, I guess in Texas. Yeah, like the first night uh, we ate at Morton's, and it was like four hundred fifty bucks for dinner, and then the ensuing like. Three or four nights, we had this private chef, and each of his meals blew yeah. the Morton's meal away. Morton's so, Steakhouse wow. was the worst meal of the trip. It really was. <laughs> it really was. And I got like I got like a half a dozen oysters. I got like this Cajun rubbed like prime um, 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 New York strip steak. Like I got the 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 twice baked cheese potatoes. Nah, that's oh, that you're crap. making me hungry. When I got when I got when I got to the ranch and I had roasted duck with apricot sauce and Chilean sea bass. And like uh, you know, raspberry chocolate mousse and chocolate cake made from from scratch, and just it was a, a prime rib and uh, now the mushroom. guy in charge, the the, the multi millionaire who owns all this. Yeah, is he fat? No, um, I, I would say um, he's he he he's maybe six feet tall, one hundred and eighty five hundred ninety five pounds, something like that. Hmm. But I, I just, fat in his position. He just buys all these exotic animals from like well, all over well, the world. It's portion control too, because the chef, you know, he he just he didn't give you like a huge plate. It was like a it was mm. it was portion control for sure. And there were th he would he would you know the, the we would show up the plates uh, the the foods on the table and he would come out and he, I say come out like the kitchen was right there. We watched him cook it, but he would be like you know this is a Chilean sea bass. It's been simmered over uh, blah 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 this and that. And he Literally would tell the us, meals from Jurassic Park. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it was so good, and, and I, I hung out with that guy a lot. Um, he was really cool, uh, the chef Eric, Eric. Yeah. and uh, this guy named John that works there. He does uh, like bushcraft and survival type uh, classes. Um, and uh, there was another guy there who, who had formerly been in the military, and he was helping out with a lot of stuff. And uh, every everybody, I go on a lot of trips, and I, I oftentimes there will be like a douchebag in the group or someone with no sense of humor. Or like the weird guy that you just gotta like not even deal with because he's just an asshole. That's but everybody, me. Every trip. everybody, <laughs> That's everybody me. out there in Texas on this trip was a genuinely nice person, and uh, and I had a great time. That was a wonderful trip. Do you remember we went on that trip, the um, the skiing trip in Killington? Yes. And there was that one old guy who wanted to play chess with everyone, and like didn't like th Cock there was a, come nighttime. There were these two beautiful girls who looked down to party. I knew it was time for me to excuse myself. I would be the 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 flat tire of the group, you know, just bringing everything into sanity. We weren't going to join in on our fun. What's that? <laughs> we weren't going to be able to responsibly join in on our fun. Even if, if I hypothetically, like, it, it, the single Woody, you know, made it whatever, I'm too old, right? Th this was like, these girls were in their uh, early to mid-20s. They, they, were, they were beautiful, and they were hot to trot. Some 42, I'd just be creepy, right? Let alone the fact that I'm not, you know, down for it. Dude, but, you totally could have gotten that blonde. All you needed was a couple of Oxycontin. <laughs> 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 oh, she was, like, um, the next Got morning. A, I, no, that night. <laughs> no, the next morning I saw her. And uh, I think she was, she hadn't gone to bed yet. But I had woke up the next morning. And, um, and like, she was just, yeah, she, you're right. I think. Well, she was modeling her ski boots and bikini out in the snow. Like <laughs> we were outside doing that, taking those pictures, and then you know we went up to a bedroom, and uh, and and she like crushed up some oxycontin and she <laughs> snorted them right off the fucking nightstand, and she looked up at me as I'm sitting on the bed by her, and these crumbs are like falling out. She, oh my goes, God. she goes, she like tries to like pass me this like rolled up bill, and she's like, "You want some?" And and I was just like, "Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm high on life. <laughs> this is a good time." I wish I could tell some of the shit that happened on that trip, but I was. I will. You Go mentioned on. the germ. You mentioned the old guy. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say he was seventy. I, I would have called him mid sixties, but yeah, you know, definitely not. He's it, getting it, close to seventy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. and he was a friend of the owner of the lodge, and we had rented the entire lodge out, and so we were the only ones there. Uh, and this guy's job, literally, it seemed because he was friends with the owner, was to like watch us and make sure that we didn't burn the place down in, in the night because there's no staff to like babysit us. I, heard, I didn't pick up on it like that, but go on. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Um, and so like we're downstairs in like this game room, 
And I believe, if I remember correctly, there was a lap dance scenario, and he was I wasn't playing. There. Woody was not there, but but the old guy was playing pool with the blonde, while the brunette gave someone else a lap dance, and I had coaxed the blonde to me to give my, to give me a lap dance, and then he's like he's like, hey, we got a game going on here, <laughs> and I was like, are you insane? <laughs> a game? He you, is probably this? is insane. He got all of that energy out of him in 1941 <laughs> in the middle of the war he's in fucking Japan. So he's just bro. trying to play a game. He's, he just wants to play some backgammon and go to bed early and you were keeping him up. <laughs> <laughs> he was upset the girl was no longer playing pool with him over there. And I'm just like, what? Oh. Are you crazy? The first night, which was the, the one Kyle's talking about, was the tame one by comparison. Like, I get up the next morning, and she's like, I can't wait for tonight. Tonight's my good bikini. The other one makes my ass look flat. And I'm like, wait, what? There were bikinis out last night? Because it's like three degrees outside, maybe below Listen. freezing. It, it, it was blizzards coming down. And I didn't didn't see the bikini thing. I had no idea there, there was any. a hot tub. I'm not sure. Well, then, about what that. is the a goddamn room, point of dressing them up in bikini? Or let them do what they want, I guess. Yeah, the bikinis were totally for party time. That's it. They were there to show off just how beautiful these girls were. Just, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> just like <laughs> yeah. picture drunk. bikinis, UGG boots, and probably some sort of hat. <laughs> yeah. And where was, where was this again? Vermont. 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 Yeah. yeah. Like Why a ski trip. trip. Not a place you associate yep. with fun generally. I, I liked it. I had a good time. Um... Yeah, that was a good time for sure. Yeah. Woody, Woody rented that Toyota Echo or whatever. <laughs> whatever the fuck. <laughs> That's and, awful. And he's like driving up this frozen mountain with it. The tires are going sixty miles an hour. The car is going twenty miles an hour. <laughs> they were was, though. So the tires were. I know you, you've told it like that. Before. The tires were going slow. There was some sort of automatic braking thing that made the tires barely move. But the motor was revving fast. So the motor was going like five thousand miles an hour, but the the or five thousand RPM, but the the tires are like braking constantly, and it's just not going anywhere. It was below walking speed up a hill. It was awful. It was hilarious when it, <laughs> when Woody went to park behind the uh, the lodge or whatever. I ran next to him and I was keeping pace with his car, and I feel like he was at like maximum. Yeah, speed as that's well. all I could do. Was, I was racing. <laughs> I wasn't was in it really to lose, fun. but walking speed was just too much for this car. Yeah, it was it was really funny. Uh, I didn't think you were gonna make it back to the airport alive. And then it turned out the worst part is, everyone left and flew out on the last day, and Kitty and I were left behind. Me, Kitty, and her little cousin JJ, who's a diminutive guy. He's like five foot nothing, little dude. And uh, we're left there, and it's like, by the end, we were looking for somebody to drive us to the airports. So everything had fallen through. Like uh, drivers didn't show. Every nothing worked out. So we're having to pay this guy that works at the place to like drive us to the airport. And it got expensive. It was a few hundred dollars, but it was like whatever. He decides to bring his girlfriend with him for the drive. So they're sitting in the front seat, and the three of us are crammed in the back of his like Land Rover. They're both smokers, and they smoke with the windows down. They chain smoke on the like four and a half hour drive. Oh, we damn. were so fucking cold. The the wind chill factor it was like negative twenty four degrees <laughs> out. Like you, it, you, when we got outside the car and I inhaled through my nose, I could feel my nose hair crystallizing. Wow, so, like, the coldest I've ever been ever ever. And then we had to like we couldn't even take the main highway because it was like. Uh, it was like a legit detour with cops, like waving flares, like can't go this way, and uh. like sent us the long way around. When I got out, I was just like, "Pay that motherfucker!" I just walked away from him. I didn't say a Dude, word. Mine was worse though. I'm like, uh. I, I took that Echo to the airport, and then you return the keys by drop. Like there was no one working at the airport, so you put your keys in this little mailbox that like drops down. Yeah. And then the flight was canceled, so then I had to take a bus, which was like nine hours from vermont to boston and then i took a uh -huh. flight home and my in the other direction it was just as bad the flight was canceled to vermont so i had to drive from boston there and yeah was, our flight in was bad too that was the one where uh the but plane, you were on a flight it beats a toyota whatever we got downed we wanted we almost we basically got shot down when we were trying to land <clears> right? like but that plane was shaking like this i was the co-pilot and we finally had to turn back and and land at like burlington vermont and get a, a cab ride or a, a i was the next car. flight and they did they canceled it so i guess yours was bad enough that they decided not to do mine i had a, 
pretty bad ski trip adventure trying to drive to Aspen once, and mm-hmm. my friend was driving, and there's, uh, well, here's how I was woken up, is, oh, deer, boom, hit a deer, <laughs> and I'm like, where the fuck are we? And we're trying to keep driving, but it br- busted the radiator, so the car would overheat in like two minutes. So we'd have to drive. It would like start overheating. We'd wait and let it cool down, drive a little bit more, and made it to some like dam power facility where there, you know, it's just out in the middle of nowhere. And, but there was a car there, and it was the only thing around. So we knock on the door, and there's like, "What are you guys doing out here?" And like, "Well, we were driving to Aspen." Oh, the road's closed up there. You can't even get there for this way. I guess it's like Don, the pass or something that's up there. I don't think it's Donner Pass, but there's some pass that's on the way to Aspen that's closed like nine months out of the year. And I guess my friend was driving down a road that was closed around the middle of nowhere and had to call someone to come tow my car from mm-hmm. like an hour and a half away and then take a Greyhound bus nine, 12 hours home, something like that. It sucked. <laughs> Machinima flew me into Aspen, and uh, Machinima would always schedule, like, the cheapest flights. And at the time, I didn't know to reject them. Like, the me of today would have been like, no, no, no. 18 hours of flying to get from oh, Aspen to North Carolina. Oh, how dare they? It, dude, that's a lot. That's <laughs> a lot. 18 hours. It was so many stopovers. and Yeah, how many connections is that? <clears throat> I think it was three connections. And, you know, they just... Dude, schedule me a better flight, you know, to work it out. That's too much. Yeah, that's awful. I've flown to Japan faster than I flew to Colorado. <laughs> just... well, did, was the last leg like just some little plane that for like a little airport? Into was Aspen like... it was. Yeah. But the thing is, it should have gone from like Aspen to Denver to North Carolina, but that's not how it went. It was just, I don't even remember all the stops, but it was awful. Uh, it was like, didn't they just let go of like 12 more people or something? Most of their content producers are gone and yeah i think so i just actually resigned with them for my channel oh did you were you it, with them before or no, i i was with them originally that was the first people i partnered with uh-huh. and then i went to full screen but dealing with and full screen was a great company have nothing against them but they don't have managed channels so the content id system just plagues me i just hate you upload something and there's like I had a, a Madden video claim just because someone else had claimed a Madden video and now it, it automatically flagged mine as being their their content and it demonetize it and you have to go through the whole thing contacting them they contact their network oh I don't know why this happened and that happened like 50 times so because it's just automatically will claim something if it's in their database of things that are other people's yeah. content. It's a neat idea. Like, like for example, like I'm a managed channel, right? And if someone else were to upload PKA, then it would say, oh, dude, this is Woody stuff. You know, they get flagged and I get monetized or whatever. Like, that's how it's supposed to work. Right. But when you've got stuff like cutscenes, you know, I yep. upload it first, hypothetically. Now that cutscene belongs to me and all these other people get false flagged. Because yep. YouTube doesn't know what's mine and what's just something I uploaded. Yeah, and and people sh- shouldn't be. It's and I don't think they're intentionally doing it. There might be some people maliciously trying to claim all these videos, but I think most it's just ignorance of I shouldn't be claiming this video because I don't own this gameplay. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's typically cutscenes and stuff, and the, the people aren't meaning to do it. They don't even know right. what's happening. You know, yeah. it just, it's all automated. And YouTube and Google in particular, you know, they work so hard to not hire customer service people, but sometimes you, you know, you need humans to make decisions. Right. Uh, not everything in al- you know, can be an algorithm, but yeah, and it just, it was interesting to me to see Shinima's, they were the, they were the bomb. They were the beginning and the end of the scene. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what they did, but. They downsized a lot, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I wonder how much, like, some of their big names, like, take Sark, for example, right? Sark, to me, after Hutch left, was the face of Machinima, right? He was the like the, the, the last big guy standing who had a public image, you know, mm-hmm. the, the associated with Machinima. When he left, were they like, oh, man, you know, I... It sucks we lost Sark. Or were they like, oh, you know, we can't keep Sark anymore, you know, he's got to go... Like, I yep. wonder yeah. how these downsizings went down. 
Yeah, I don't know the behind the scenes. Me too. But, but I love Sark. He's funny. Yeah, Sark is awesome. <laughs> we got to get him on the show at some point. We we invited. He said he wanted to come on, and uh, and but then it seems like when we do like try to make it happen, he's it's not the right night or something. We got to set it up, to make it happen. I didn't yeah, even I mean, know that Sark wasn't on Machina Machinima anymore. I must have missed the boat he, on that. He might be partnered through them, but he's definitely not employed by them anymore. He he went the uh, independent contractor route. Uh, most of them did. Scene Anders did too. Hutch did, of course. Um, yeah, I, I, mostly they followed the money, right? Like you know, when being employed by Machinima was the most money, they went for that, and then. When being, you know, then they saw that people were making even more money. They went for that. That's. I don't think that was all their intentions, though. I think Hutch was kind of uncomfortable being in like a big production spotlight, kind of like that, because he had done like a AMA. Yeah, I Hutch in particular, I think you're right about. Where um, he was just uncomfortable. He didn't feel. Comfortable. He quits YouTube every so often just because uh, the stress doesn't sit well with him. Yeah. Right, just get away and goes off and clears his mind and comes back. And <laughs> yeah, it's a nice job if you can get it. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I don't know. I was watching um, Ariani Celeste. I'm sure I messed her name up, but she's a UFC ring girl, and uh, her and Ronda Rousey feud all the time. Ronda Rousey's always saying, you know, it's ridiculous that some fighters make less than ring girls and stuff, and. Ariana was like, this job is a lot harder than you think it is. You know, I'm ready to go home. I'm tired. I have like 50 more outfits to wear, etc. And um, <laughs> on one well, hand, like I, it really, it opened my eyes because like people on YouTube, like with this job, will be like, dude, it's a lot harder than you think. You know, your day and night and the criticism and this and it gets to you and it's depressing. And um, I, I watched a guy's video said he was depressed, but he was really successful. He was a friend of PewDiePie's and his content seemed good on his own. And I forget his name. And uh, it was like, I, I see where he's coming from. And that's ridiculous, though, to compare what Ronda Rousey as a professional fighter does training day in and day out to be the best of the best to having to exist in different outfits. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you have to keep yourself in good shape. That's definitely, you right. know, that's not easy. But at the end of the day, you're walking around and you're existing in different outfits. And there's a lot of criticism, right? So her job is to be beautiful. And you find the slightest little, like, pimple on her shoulder blade or something is going to be like, look at that. I found an imperfection in this real girl who's supposed to be perfect. And um, she's aging, right? I don't know how old she is, but she's probably 30-ish now. She's been doing this for a while. You can't stay 19, you know? So that's going to be criticized. They'll be showing pictures of before and after and et cetera. It's not a perfect job. Having said that, you know, I doubt there's many coal miners who are like, whoa, 50 outfits? That is tough. <laughs> wow. yeah. How about you try one outfit for 50 years? <laughs> and black <laughs> ones. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, there's, there's I have no, no like, doubt that it's... It's but definitely I, harder than people think, but at the, you cannot compare it. She's not going to come Rousey down with a ring girl lung. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, 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 I, I don't know. It all comes down to where the value is, right? Like, you know, a, a fighter who hasn't really distinguished him or herself, not Ronda Rousey, but like, you know, the lesser fighters, the ones that do make less than the ring girls, um, they're interchangeable. They're not stars yet. They don't have the appeal. And someone might say, well, that ring girl... She's worthless. You know, what good is she bringing? No, she does bring something. You know, like, by that argument, you'd say Bruce Bruffer doesn't bring much, right? What does he do? Announce the fighters? What does he do? No, he's part of the show and the pageantry. He gets the, paid. He gets paid well. I so, bet he does, yeah. But but is that ring girl, is that like her career? Is she just the ring girl and that's her only job? She can I make a living doing that? The I doubt she goes the... to Applebee's afterward and <laughs> waits tables. I'm pretty sure that's what she's doing. The ring girl you know? is the platform that made her famous, right? You know, So she also shows up in Maxim Magazine and gets modeling gigs and stuff like that. But it's all based on the, the ring girl platform that made her somebody. Um but yeah, you know, Bruce Buffer, he's just part of the pageantry. You know, there's tons of lighting and tech guys and grips that are handling the electricity and, on, on the show that probably make more than the $8,000, you know, bottom tier fighters. But, um, you know, it's, it's about the value you bring to the show. And it's, it's not about how hard it is. You know, like you were saying, you know, oh, you can't even compare how tough it is to train and get punched in the face and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know... When you talk about value to the show, there's some audio guy who's probably worth more than 
uh, someone having their first fight in the UFC. Yeah. I'm not talking about the financial regard of it. I'm just saying that just straight up difficulty level when you're comparing that, it's not even the beginning of a contest. Yeah. Not at all. Difficulty level, sure. But that's not what determines pay, right? If you go by difficulty level, mm-hmm. I think yeah, coal miner might be worse than Ronda Rousey's job. Yeah. I, it's coal, not, coal miner's probably worse than 99.5% of jobs. What's Is worse than really? coal miner? I mean, they're not down there with pickaxes anymore. There's no canaries sitting no, on the I, shelf. I, I know. Here's I'm talking doing. about the, those coal miners. The old school, you know, an 11 year old standing there looking vacant eyed with sunken in eyes and, yeah. you know, There's sallow cheeks also, looking scared. what they call a vein, right? So, so picture the mountain having like four or six feet tall worth of coal. And then they have to mine that. And they take these machines that like scrape it out. But now you have a, not a tunnel, but like a room that's four or six feet tall. So you can't stand up all day long. And by the way, when they, they do the roof, the roof wants to collapse. So there's a guy whose job it is, is to hit the roof until it stops falling. And then they like drill holes into the roof or like, you know, spikes into the roof to make it not fall and make it sturdy. And that's an awful job. Like you hit <laughs> roofs, making them collapse on you. Yeah. Hopefully not until you realize they're kind of collapse proof. And then you make them even more collapse proof that you're it's the job that most coal miners die from the crab fishermen those guys that job sucks <laughs> yes yeah I would but get it so is worth sick. it imitation crab is awful <laughs> you need those guys <laughs> that's a dude people in alaska make money um there's yeah. a there's a ufc fighter i forget his name he's kind of freaky and um he goes to alaska and does like crab fishing and like uh, an oil wrangler. I think that's a job title. But basically, he's uh, you know he gets oil out of the ground, and um, uh, he makes real money. Like this guy will make like a hundred grand, hundred and fifty grand, you know, and then come in the UFC and fight for a while, and he makes nothing there. And you just kind of forget that, like, dude, there's substantial opportunities available to semi-skilled people if you're working as hard as people in Alaska do. Well, yeah, and that's a lot of risk too. People died that crab fishing. I, I thought they made like a hundred thousand dollars in like a month or something, but they only do it like once a year. So that's I, I, I might not be quoting accurate facts, but it's something <laughs> crazy like that. Well, it depends <laughs> on how much crab they get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's a lot. I think it's three months. But dude, I would I would be awful at that job. I'd be terrible. I would get it seasick. Looks like a lot of people are all, oh, yeah, you, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, I, you would be vomiting the whole time. I, yeah, I'd be so worthless on a Kyle crab. would swallow some water, be out 15 minutes. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's seawater. I'd be just fine. This is a three month journey, Kyle, batting down the hatches. Gonna, we're not going back to shore for you. Three hours later. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't physically do that job. It looks so hard. It looks so beat when, they in, when they're done at the end of the day. And the hours they work, I mean, they're like drunk with fatigue while doing that job. Yeah. It, it, Have you ever taken Ambien? Yeah. yeah. I can only imagine. So I, I, I had taken Ambien and then I woke up um, like in the middle of the night and like walking upstairs to go pee. I felt so, I was, it was like I was drunk. I was stumbling around and stuff. And, and I think it's, that's it's how it's mildly it hallucinogenic as well. Yeah. So really? Like, yeah. This is the stuff that stops you from getting seasick, right? Ambien. No, Ambien is a sleep pill. Sleep oh, aid. okay, I'm mixing it up. I'm thinking of there's one with a D, right? No, take some Ambien next time you get on a ship. I don't you'll think you're being a good friend, Taylor. Dramamine. Dramamine is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I think. I don't know. But, uh, dude. Yeah, uh, people abuse it, Ambien. They'll take it and then fight it to stay up, and it's like... That doesn't sound fun at all. I was so yeah. fucked up. <laughs> Yeah. I went back in bed as soon as I could be. Oh. Yeah, what an awful way to try and get high. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> you have to you have to stay awake through a sleeping pill. Dude, back to vaping. What does vaping make you feel like? What? what why is everybody vaping now? Well, mine's just to cure my nicotine. All right, and- all right. So <laughs> nicotine is a drug that makes you feel like something, right? No. Well, when you first do it, it it does. You might get lightheaded and. It's nothing intoxicating. Depending on how you puff on nicotine, it could be right. a rela- it can relax you or it can stimulate you. Yeah. Is it like well, well, once you're, no? Once you're addicted to it, then it's it's I don't know what else to compare it to hunger. 
it's like you know what does eating food make you feel it, it makes me feel not hungry it's twofold so, yeah. it's twofold you get the nicotine cravings so so the reason that you're like oh i need a cigarette when when you when you feel like that it's because a you've got to cure your nicotine craving because, so now your habit is, is causing uh, a, a negative if you don't indulge it you're like oh, right. i need a cigarette it's making me feel bad to uh, feel just, normal yeah to feel normal but also it's like you know you maybe get some bad news maybe you're stressed out maybe you're like fuck 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 all right and you're the, yeah. you, you that's the moment when you meet one too when you're stressed out and you need that it's a you know it calms you down it slows your heart rate but then if you're like trying to stay up at night on like a, a long car ride you're puffing one after another and you're puffing them fast and it's speeding your heart rate up it's uh it's kind of a perfect drug i have not smoked in a while now i've uh <laughs> it's been a long time but you vape I, uh-uh, I quit vaping too you quit everything yeah it's been a while it's been months what's your motivation um, paintball. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> just being healthier in general, you know, lungs Is it fast. vanity? Yeah. That's the, that's the, Kyle, I forget who we were looking at. There was somebody and Kyle said, Do you, you probably remember the conversation. It's Ethan Hawk. Ethan, Ethan. Hawk's forehead is, is so <laughs> wrinkled up and there are these deep, unattractive wrinkles. And we and were I like, remember it the opposite. And I, you're probably right because my memory sucks. But I, I remember someone aging particularly well, and Kyle was like, "How can I age that well?" That's how I remember it. But maybe it was backwards, and I was like, "Smoking, you know, the smoking will age you. It absolutely does. It, it leathers your skin and and etc." And Kyle yeah, was like, a, uh, "He said that's my that might get me to stop. Appeal to my vanity." <laughs> that'll do it. I got myself some Dove uh, men's facial lotion. Been moisturizing every day now. It's all silky smooth. <laughs> I've noticed I've already, you know, already already looks better up there. You are looking good, Kyle. I'd hit it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Toning up to I, I'm really I'm really excited about this paintball thing. I know I keep I say, I literally I've repeated myself a dozen times, but I, I like it for a lot of reasons. I really like like meeting fans when when you're doing something together. Like when I meet you at the movies or something, and you just like I like start like spazzing out that was kind of weird you know who i'm talking to but <laughs> but like if we're there to like play paintball together it's like yeah man come on me and you're gonna go play paintball let's go shoot some kids together but also i really get competitive about things but i'm not good enough at baseball or softball to go and be competitive at it but i'm good enough at paintball to go be competitive at it and i'm i'm able to arm myself better than most i would say so <laughs> yeah. better than that's all a, Better yeah, than all. And there are going to be people out there com competing with you on an armament <laughs> level. There is no. No, I literally have. I mean, I, 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 this gun is this gun's about fifteen hundred bucks too. This is this is my speedball gun. But this thing over here blows this out of the water. You it, think? This does. Yeah, it's got the guts of of a gun like this. Like like it's on the inside. It's a speedball marker. It'll shoot twenty eight times a second, but it'll shoot. Those first strike rounds accurately as well. It, you know, I can I could have a mag, for example, full of fifty first strike rounds that are super accurate up to, you know, fifty sixty yards, and then I can have a big hopper full of you know two hundred paintballs. So I can go full auto spraying and praying and, and suppressing. So I'm just just thinking out loud. I imagine that that expensive gun you have, right, the one with the scope and the first strike and all that, is probably ideal for scenario and mixed scenario stuff. But if you're on a speedball course, it's hard to beat a speedball gun because you can run and sprint and slide and do things like that. I feel like this is just as good because it's, on the inside, it is a speedball gun. It has the same rate of fire. It's but it a doesn't heavy, have it's, the same mobility, right? It, yeah. like you won't be able to... About five pounds. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like an AR-15. I mean, I can run pretty fast with an AR. It's definitely going to slow me down a little, but that's why I'm training, Woody. That's why I'm running every day. <laughs> right. I'm running with the gun. Like that way. I hope you are. <laughs> running around outside. You know. Are you really? You well, maniac. I, I, I stay inside. I don't want anybody to see me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. But I'm, I'm taking multiple guns. I'm going to take my autococker. I'll take my uh, Planet Eclipse. I'll take this thing. Um, I'm really going to enjoy myself. <coughs> to, the, uh, to the mag. I think I'm gonna go play uh, one of these weekends. I gotta, I gotta film some stuff uh, in a couple days, and then I'm gonna go find a paintball field to go test this stuff out at. Sweet. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So, so when we talk about vaping, it reminded me when you brought up before the show that they had legalized marijuana in uh, Washington D.C. Dude, in a weird way. So get this: D marijuana is legalized in D.C., right? But <laughs> it's illegal to sell it. It's illegal to buy it. It's, uh, I guess it's just legal to use it. It's, 
you so, can give it away for free. So they're not going to have dispensaries things right. there. It's not. You there's no medical it. marijuana you there. You can't sell it. You can give it away for free, and you can use it. It's. You know what the law is like sex. Can you grow it? You can't grow sex. Anymore. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! It's just like sex, you can give it away for free, and you can do it, but you can't buy it or sell it. Makes but sense. For, for their own home use, they're saying you can grow it. I, I hadn't really thought about that. I don't know what the rules are for growing it. I guess yeah. you can, since you can own it. I don't know. There might be limits on how much you can grow. I'm not they, sure where they are for that. Flies it in Alaska, too, that I saw. Some crazy Republicans are trying to say that the... Who runs D.C.? A mayor. The mayor of D.C. is going to be arrested for legalizing pot. What? <laughs> yeah. So what was this like an executive order of the mayor? I don't know. I don't know. How, how was this law ratified? Dude, I swear I really do try <laughs> to be down the middle, but it just seems like all the things I disagree with tend to come from the Republicans, right? They were the ones against net neutrality. They were the ones uh, uh, against legalization of marijuana. It just seems like it, all the things they really stand for are wrong. You know, they they take office and the first priority is like, well, we got to lower state taxes on rich people. We got to get the Keystone pipeline passed. We got to do this. And I'm like, God damn, Republicans, fuck. I'd, let me like you. Come on. You know, like your number one priority is a payoff to the people that donated to your campaign. Really? First first order of business? Yeah. And I'm, I consider myself to be a libertarian, which is like uh -huh. Ron Paul is a Republican, but libertarian is... You I guess libertarian it's, too. I, yeah, I guess it's considered right wing, but it's not Republican. That's for sure. Like it's freedom of the people to do what you want as long as yeah, you're not yeah, it, it's, else. you do whatever the fuck you want. But you better not tell me what I could do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's what it is in a nutshell. It's it's, right. it's just leave me the fuck alone. Let me do my thing. I'll leave you alone. You do yours. It, it is, and I'm not. God, that sounded so great to me the first time I heard it. Right? It was like, oh, this is fantastic. But then you dive into it, and you're like, well, what about you know, if if some power plant dumps so much pollution into my yard that I get sick and cancer. well, you get your posse well, well, the, together, yeah, well, that, that and is right right on over there. <laughs> so what they literally say is, well, that gets solved through the court system. There's no laws around it, but you can sue them for damages, and that handles that. So it's literally like me against, in my case, Duke Energy or PSENG going to court. It's it's like you know suing a tobacco company or something. It's such a mismatch in terms of you know finances. All right. and, it, it, it's like, man, I feel like you need some sort of governmental protection to stop you from getting raped by... You know, if, if you just say no rules, which is well, similar that, to the libertarian well, platform... That's, that's total anarchy. So that's... It's, it's literally than, what Ron Paul's there's, going there, for. There's still public services that are needed. You can't just say, you know, no police department, no fire department, everyone. Just leave everyone alone. You know, there has to be some... I put out my own fire. Yeah. Ron Paul, I forget. I'm gonna get these numbers wrong. So you know, PKA stats. But he was like, of the whatever eleven, you know, government services, we'll get rid of nine of them. And EPA was one of them. EPA is gone under him. And it's like, eh, I don't know. It, yeah, I don't think that I would agree with that. It, it 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 got pretty extreme when you really look into you know what he wanted to do. Now you might you might vote for him under the notion that. Well, what he wants to do and what he can do are separate things, and so long as he has his other checks and balances, you get closer to what you want. But All right. yeah, eh, just, whatever politics. <sighs> hey, today was a good day. Net neutrality. Yeah, Yay, great. free internet! Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it it it's a really good thing. But but on one hand, to to play devil's advocate to to that law of like Netflix say is taking up i forget what the stats are 60 percent of the bandwidth of the internet or something crazy like that so what i guess it's and they're paying the same as me or you so you know that's the free internet type of model is is that fair seems fair to me so what it is is they pay their isp a lot, right? They pay cogent quite a bit, right. and then but then it, then it stresses the ISPs of everyone else. All the downstream ones, right? Like cogent right. and say Verizon at that interconnect where they touch each other, that gets stressed. 
Um, the fix for that stress is actually pretty inexpensive, but they like to charge a lot for it because it's it's valuable. Um, is it fair that like Verizon has to pay a lot to make sure that they're not stressed out? Well, they have these agreements, right? Like so, they're they're both tier one, and they agree to exchange data for free. Now, Verizon can send as much data to Cogent as it wants, and vice versa. Verizon is just, in my mind, like extracting money from them because they have the endpoints and they feel like, you know, they can. Um, yeah, at any point, they can stop. They can start charging each other back and forth for the data. They just choose yeah. not to because they feel like it's a win-win to go for free. Because like I said, it's very cheap to connect them. I don't know. I do hear your point. And, you know... It, at all, some point, it and, is, and all the infrastructure really needs to be upgraded to be able to handle all that bandwidth. But it's cheap, right? They, no one's saying there's not enough lines in the ground. They're just saying that where you connect the two, that's where there's a stress point. Well, I'm sure, I, I, like I've done data networks and stuff like that, and there's more than just you know, like I have to change this one connector. Like every switch and the node that's going out to every neighborhood has you know this a hub that supplies that neighborhood that's now overloaded because everyone's using so much internet watching Netflix or whatever. That, that's not where it's stressed though, right? It's it's literally in the, what is it called in the data center? The cross connect box or something like that? There's um the spot where all the different networks connect in the, there's like a cage full of routers that go for, I think it's called so, cross connect. So that, so that was the only bottleneck in the... That's the current bottleneck. Who knows what it will be next time? You know, But, but yeah, it's, it's right there where they literally just like drop in another what SPF plus port or something and then 10 gigs they connect and they're, they're set to go. Um, it's cheap to fix. They just choose not to because they can get a lot of money by doing that. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, I have a story here. Florida, man. I love Ooh. those. <laughs> so, um, there used to be YouTube videos on it, but now it's gone. And, uh, here's the deal. <sighs> YouTube video purports to show a Florida man inhaling vapor, he was vaping, produced from a generous friend's ejaculate. What? <laughs> what? Wait. <laughs> what? Yeah, the clip's gone private, but it gained traction on Reddit this morning and is serviced in all its revolting glory. Now it's Then it's got to be again. out there. It's got to be out there. Do you want to hunt for it? Not no, particularly, but, uh, but it's got to be out there. Why? Surprisingly, this wasn't the outcome of a uh, heinous bet, at least according to the dude's filming. They promised to pay their bro, no doubt, highly negotiated sum of $68 for the stunt. We're fairly <laughs> skeptical on the whole thing, and here's why. The load from the previous night, as it's referred to in the clip, had a somewhat watery consistency compared to semen's usual viscosity. In, it's possible, however, that the spunk was mixed with mixed with vegetable glycerin, a common ingredient in e-liquids. After filling his vaporizer with the mystery fluid, our hero steals himself and takes several deep breaths amid laughter and exhortations from the crew. Come on, massive cloud toot, one of them demands. Then, in due course, the guy puckers up and delivers. <laughs> and here, let me go to the massive cloud toot. <laughs> That is horrific. <laughs> the spirited uh, performance dollars? earns him a roar of approval and a slyly flashed peace sign. But he lunges for the bathroom and his friends warn him not to puke, probably because that would violate the terms of the 50-page contract they drew up for this crucial undertaking. 50-page contract. I think they're being sarcastic. Whether this is real or not, we'll all remember where we were when vape culture jumped the shark, a shark that was swimming in a vat of human jizz. That's awful. That's disgusting. Here, I'll give you what the What temperature do you have to set it to to properly vaporize? I the feel seat? like some experimentation is uh, is is due. Now, Four, I don't vape, degrees. but you guys do. Uh, I do ejaculate. So I, I, think I, we've got I don't a team. vape my jizz anything less than 400 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's that's awful. Oh, here are the images. Okay. Yeah, these are the screen grabs from the video. There's the mystery fluid. It does look a little, you know, uh, uh, it just doesn't look like my semen, that's all. Oh, that's uh, kind that's of a liquid thing. But, you know, like they said, it might be mixed with vegetable glycerin. And, well, uh, that was just a bad idea. Is yeah. he French inhaling it? Or is uh, that just a picture at the top? 
Wow. Ooh, French inhaling? What, what is that? When you uh, Good let the smoke nose. billow out of your mouth and then you inhale it through your nose at the same time? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's a French inhale. Florida men <laughs> keeping PKA stories rolling. Wow. How much how much would you charge to uh to vape semen? No. No. Don't say no. There's a number. There's a number out there. We don't know what it is, but it exists. Whose does it have to be? Be real. <laughs> For ten grand you'd do it, right? No. Yeah. Ten grand? No, I, 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 don't need, I don't need oh, yeah. I don't need oh, yeah. ten grand that bad. <laughs> really? Ten grand? Yeah. That's you can catch it with ten grand. He did it for yeah. sixty eight. Sixty eight dollars, yeah. My number's higher than that. I'd say well, seventy two. Seventy two dollars yeah. and you'd vape semen? Take back to when I was, you know, working minimum wage job. I've I've you know my number might be smaller. Uh huh. <laughs> like ten grand, that's like a I lot like of the money. If I put a vape, if I put a vape pen with some cum in it and ten thousand cash on the table, you might be tempted. You'd hit that thing. <laughs> yeah, you would. You'd hit it. <laughs> like, I'd hit it. I'd definitely smoke that thing. Absolutely. My Ten issue grand? is this: I have kids, right? Dude, hypothetical single Woody would vape that shit for five hundred dollars. Well, but... <laughs> not tell anybody about this. We'll keep this between you and I. <laughs> but I mean, the thing I is, it, like, if this were to get out and like. Hope goes through high school with the dad that vapes semen. You know that's not good. That... <laughs> Smoker. Exactly. Think yeah. Of, uh, that think I, of, I think can't of the have that. Percussions. Even if it was just among friends, someone's gonna know about it. And now, right. how much is it worth for you to be the guy that smoked semen? Yeah. Now, know? if it was say <laughs> enough to put her through college, it, it's right? not just the act. It's the the aftermath. The shame. The, the shame. Yes. Are you allowed to like drop some like blueberry <laughs> flavor enhancer? Oh in yeah. That? Oh totally. yeah. These guys so seem to use like vegetable like glycerin. I mean, blueberry indeed. bleach salt or whatever it would taste like. Sure. And yeah. I'm sure, I mean, think about it. You're vaporizing the liquid. Exactly. It's not like even nothing, cum anymore. It's just water. You're only getting the water, right? Like, <laughs> absolutely not. You're getting cum. <laughs> vaporized cum. <laughs> I mean, oh, water is a key ingredient in cum. It, Gotta you, be. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a strong argument, Kyle. I mean, if uh, you vaporized <laughs> orange juice, you you just get water, right? No. Yes. So there you should be really place. two prices. It's like, what would you be paid to do it, and then what would you be paid to do it, and then everyone knows about it. <laughs> yeah, that's a different story, the I public, suppose. The public humiliation that comes That might be a different every, story. Everyone knowing about it, there's no amount of money. Because your life, it would be, that you would always be that guy. Like you, you would never not be that guy. You could cure cancer and it'd be like, yeah, this is good. maybe you got the inspiration from that cum vapor fruit cake. <laughs> when I, when, I, when I, uh, I was a lifeguard a long, long time ago, and a friend of a friend at a frat party ate a plate full of poop. Oh, and, my God. Yeah. Who's poop? Who's poop? Uh, someone else at the parties. And and he, wasn't even like money involved poop? in this was person poop. Yeah, I I don't know if there was money involved. If there was a, I, oh there was money involved. And it was a hundred dollars for a hundred dollars. <laughs> but he literally <laughs> ate it with the fork, right? So it was like seven or eight, like you know, scoops of poop. Yeah, yep. and and yeah, he just he would just like 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 I eat chicken. You know, use the side of the fork. You kind of dig through, and then he took it. And the thing is, they called him shit eater. Like, they introduced him to me as shit eater. This was months ago, right? Yeah. He had done this, like, before winter break. It's summertime. And Put they're like, this toast. is shit eater. Why do they call him shit eater? Well, yeah, he I ate bet shit. If you found him today, there's still people calling him shit eater. That could be. <laughs> that could be. And that's the challenge, man. That's the thing. Like, it, 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 it follows you. Some of these acts... The, for a hundred bucks, if he can go back and give back that hundred bucks and not be <coughs> shit eater his whole life. Exactly, dude. <laughs> uh, it's not a good look, right? It's not a good look. That's not what you want to be known as. And as bad as it is for you, when, when you have like family honor to concern yourself with, then it, it only gets worse. All right. Shit. Now he's like married with kids and he runs, hey, they're shit eater. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a problem. That's 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 a an old man back in the day. Yeah. He ate a whole plate of shit. <laughs> Not even his. It was Larry's shit. Larry's like, yeah, it was my shit. It was true. <laughs> I, I threw up. Yeah, I threw up. It was my up, shit. <laughs> oh, that, that's way worse than the, the cum vape. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Undoubtedly.
Yeah, it's yeah. Hundred dollars. Oh. Wow. Having to I chew can't. it. But Having my, to my wonder what the I, diet was of the person. My cousin and I used to like we'd find disgusting things on the farm, and we'd like we we'd suppose the question. You know, you'd say, "Hey, wh- how much to take a bite of that?" And in in the in the the retort would be. Well, do I have to like chew it up and swish it around, or can I get some mustard involved with the process? You know, and we'd come up with dollar amounts for like putrid things, you know, a rotten dead chicken, or like a mud hole that clearly was mostly cow shit, or you know, something like that. So that was a game we often played. We never actually did it because that's just sick and ri- ridiculous. But it was just fun to play the game and figure out how much gosh, money. Just thinking about it, <laughs> I yeah. got a question. Link inbound. Uh, go back to the other thing. Which one would you rather go out with? <coughs> I gotta pull this. The little one. The one on the right. The little one. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, I like the big one. You're then you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I, I, I feel like the big one has like, I, it's sexier to me that that she's tall like that. There's more leg there. She's like a full sized and then some person. Oh, by the way, one is an Olympic swimmer and the other is an Olympic gymnast. No, little one. Fool! <laughs> yeah. You're picking the no. swimmer. No, Are you I'm, just, being, you're just being contrarian? You're just being contrarian right now. There's no way no, that you would choose I the tall decision. Yeah. I mean, and, I've known and, my and decision. I, and I, I'm not making my decision off of height either. I'm just uh, of yeah. Uh, see, to the me, one on the right is more attractive in the face to me. The one on the right is prettier, or she knows how to do makeup better. One of those. Um, it's a little bit of both. It's probably prettier. But well. I, it might be in it. I, I feel like the one on the right does make it better than the one on the Look, left. Lurch, Lurch just isn't doing it for me. <laughs> I, I, I imagine her legs to be so long that that's kind of hot. I imagine her like arms and her torso to be bigger. And I, I, I just I, you want to date a thing? I like tall chicks, but yeah, I, I feel like like there's some sort of like like Rebecca Romaine. I don't know her, but, but I don't. I don't the fact that she's like a full-sized person, the fact that she's like there's just more to her, like she's more substantial. The other one to me is a toy, and uh, and I'd I'd rather have the the taller woman. Well, you incorrect. It, yeah, that, <laughs> false. That was a that's a wrong answer right there. That just yeah, did, that's uh, clearly the smaller one. Really? Yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah, daintiness oh. is a sign of femininity. That's just natural for people to, to wow. make that connection. Well, put 2 or 3% more on my game eater. Girl, yeah, that girl, remain. You don't want a girl who can dunk on you. What he's thinking, like, but just think of how big those scoopy hands are in the water, just like plowing through. Well, like, <laughs> Romaine like, is gorgeous like, as well. Like, yeah, she's, she's like, like six foot tall. And this enormous individual over here. She's pretty. This girl's pretty. Yeah, and she's, she's pretty. definitely I'm pretty just... to be an enormous person like this, but the little girl is is much cuter. She's, her hair's her hair's really nice. She, you know, she's got a, like a but she's got a so face. Short. She's got like her, her smile. Her more. legs her are going better. to be short. Her her body is going to like. There's she's in a gymnast. Yeah, she's she's a tiny little. She's thing. all bendy. You, you know, I, I I considered that right. And there's something hot about the whole bendy thing. And she's thing. so little. Are you but about to tell us is, this girl's like 11 yeah. years old or something and you're tricking us? Like, oh, here, look, no, I'm here, not look. going to. Gosh, I hope she's not That's 11. Uh, um, there, look at those legs. Yeah, that's a lot of leg. I feel like the thing is, I don't trust pictures on the internet. Yeah, I don't trust this picture at all. This is not. This isn't natural. You're right. (laughs) It's not even a red background. She's a model. It's like a green screen. She's. She was a. I think it's Mystique in X Men. She was Mystique. Those shoes don't even look photoshopped anymore. They could make me look as hot as that chick if they photoshop it enough. (laughs) Yep. Uh, That'd take a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't think it takes too much. Yeah, come on. I got. Hot belly button. Um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely like the tall one. I feel like she's, I don't know, there's just something more substantial about her size and the length of her torso that's hot to me. I think you're in the minority there. If we would have a vote, yeah, I think it would be like 99 to 1. I wonder if there's, like, how, I, I will agree I'm in the minority. Certainly I'm in the bottom quartile here. But I, there's someone else out there who's gonna get what I'm saying. Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna be like, yeah, that like that that shoulder to like crotch distance is hot. Well, there's like there's someone there's out there who's getting like, well, I'd eat shit for a hundred dollars. I don't understand what they're making <laughs> <else> about. 
There's someone, someone who's like, yeah. right, you need like a full size person to hug, right? And and oh. I, I'm not like the chubby chaser or anything, but I, I definitely like her length is hot to me. But she yeah, puts if, her if, over. You, if you blacked out the faces and got them naked standing side by side, like I might agree with the body types, but no, no. I, be, I bet that gymnast has just a really tight rocking body, and well, the, the, the swimmer, swimmer, the swimmer does too, but I bet it's more lanky and and like sinewy. Sinewy, yeah, that's I had that in my head. I wasn't gonna use it. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, the, sinewy. The, the swimmer has very small boobs, it appears. That or she's wearing a sports bra or something that's raining those babies in. But I don't care. Yeah, I I just I just like her her long female shape. That's hot. Fair enough. I mean th- they are both attractive. I just yeah. objectively. Yeah, yeah the one on the left is probably the back. most attractive chick on her swim team. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no. I don't I think swimmers are hot. Maybe a little bias there. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I don't see it. I don't know. I've been around a lot of swimmers. In the, the, I've watched a lot of I guess uh, they're just gymnasts. athletes. Yeah, like I've watched a lot of female in athletes. athletic types. Well, yeah. Gymnasts are athletes just as much. Or I don't know just as much. I've never done either. So I have no idea. There's, undoubtedly, all Olympic athletes are athletes. At least all the ones I'm thinking well, of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they all train pretty hard. Even the, the curling Olympics. fellow. Dar- is darts a sport in the Olympics? I don't know. Curling is archery is, is though. Archery counts as a sport. It's oh. an Olympic sport, I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But but also you could probably get some pretty unathletic people to uh, excel. I, I, I forget the name of the the sport, the, the Canadian sport where you push the rock on the ice. Curling. Like, curling. Curling. Yeah. The yeah. Mop, mop guys. Would you consider them mop guys athletes? Really? I don't know about that. I don't know. <laughs> Those That's guys the, are like drunk like, in why the not middle of their event. Board in there as well, and, and like horseshoes. Like, uh, you know, it would be a, a better one than any of those. Bring what? lawn darts into the Olympics. <laughs> that is an adventure. They're not even legal anymore. <laughs> really? I don't think they're sold lawn darts. Well, my uncle Trust had some it. of those. You know, get international. That was the greatest idea ever when I was a kid. You know, throw these darts up at the end and look up. <laughs> look up, there's the dart. <laughs> that's, that's exactly why you can't buy them. Those things are no joke. It's like three or four inches of steel yeah. needle. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's basically like a shuttlecock, right? If you guys know, like the badminton shuttlecock with like a three or four inch steel needle in the top or maybe a short arrow and, and you throw the dart up in the it's a dart why am i not describing it as Imagine a big like, steel like dart a, like a dart one would use in, in, on the lawn like <laughs> yeah. no, 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 like a dart you might throw at a giant or something like it's just it's, a, it's like three or four inches of steel with the big you know feather thing behind it but they're typically plastic and uh yeah, they just they you throw way up in the air, and the steel's so heavy they come driving down. Uh, but I, we never, well, we rarely. What they do is you put circles Into on the ground. Hundreds of kids' faces. It was a little like horseshoes, where you throw it across the yard and try and get it in a circle. But yeah. that's not what people did. They threw it straight up in the air as hard as they could, and then they watched them come down, and you dodge them. This is a terrible, <laughs> terrible Can idea. Can you imagine the age that came out in, like the 30s or 40s when they're playing that, and the parents are just having their martinis, and the kids are doing that. The parents are watching them, and they're like throwing it poorly, and they're like, Billy, calm your nerves with a cigarette. <laughs> Throw it better. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, <sighs> That's crazy. Uh-oh. That's funny. <laughs> Imagining. That. All right, here's one for you. So look, if NASA offered you the chance to be the first person to walk on Mars, but you had a 10% chance of survival, would you do it? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Not even not a chance. Like, my my legacy of that is means nothing to me if I'm dead. You're not going to die change well either. To, change it to 2% and then ask me again. <laughs> it's gonna change yeah. your answer. <laughs> okay, two percent chance of dying of living would 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 you do it for the two percent chance of living? No. Uh, <laughs> why, why would that? <laughs> why did we go through that exercise? Like, if there was a zero percent chance of me dying, I don't even think that I'd want to put myself through going. To oh Mars. wow! Oh, I totally do that. 
for zero percent, I would do it. Yeah, if I get to live and be the first Martian, then then let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I can vlog the whole thing. I mean, you're guaranteed to go down in history, right? You're the Neil Armstrong, the strong. Like, this is going to happen. It, I can't do it. I have too much responsibility. I got, like, a special needs kid, a wife, a daughter, etc. Like, I, I can't go rolling the dice, you know, with a 10% chance of surviving. But, you know, a hypothetical <laughs> single me, if things aren't going good, and you offer me a chance to be immortal like this. Yeah. I, yeah that's I, true. If could, I were could homeless, you, all right, could you live it. in your closet for... Like, ah, I'd be bigger than two, that. Two years. <laughs> maybe he's, maybe Woody's closet, but yeah, my closet's yeah. fine. <laughs> I could live in there. Yeah, man, I got a Woody's fridge in there. What the fuck are you talking about? Do we get the changing room? I could, I could <laughs> ride my bike for laps in that <laughs> changing room. If we have it's a changing a, room with a mirror, that, that's, that's a made-up room. The mirror must be eight feet tall. So, so, like, what is the ship that they're going there in, though? It's got, it's not going to be some huge, you know, Babylon 5 city. It's going to be it's something... A, it's a ship with, like, a 90% success rate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, a 10% uh, success it, rate. It's, it's, it's the confined spaces for an ex really extended period of time that I just wouldn't want to do it. Yeah, that'd be... <laughs> Being in space, just the idea of it, I, I want to say it'd be so cool, and I'm sure it would, but that would just be so surreal and freaky. Like, I feel like I would get up there and yeah. immediately have a panic attack and just <laughs> well, not dude, even be able to function. If I was and how be long... alone on a spaceship for, like, three years on my way to Mars, I would download petabytes of porn. <laughs> <laughs> like just... Lots of porn. <laughs> I would get all <laughs> the porn. Bring that go... job machine, get it solar-powered. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would come prepared with so much that that my spaceship would have the odor of spunk that they have to yeah. never be removed. You have to ejaculate into space. There's so much semen we had to start vaporizing it. Little <laughs> <laughs> did we know it became addictive. Seventy-five <laughs> years later, when they discover the the vessel, <laughs> it looked it's like just... that room from South Park when when they first got yeah, the yeah. name. It's, it's like uh, five auto blows that look like those horse masturbatory devices and then just like 600 dead D-cell batteries. <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's all I do to pass the time. Like if it was just going to the space station for like a week and then coming home, I'd do that. I could be in the confined space for a little while, but years? Mm. I think you're looking at like a six-month journey or something like that. I get you car you're sick. Not, yeah, you're not going to get there and back in six months. I get no, car go sick, there in six months. You're going to stay for a while. I probably get space sick. Just probably. Yeah, I don't that's think awful. A boat. Find out that you're get space sick like 15 minutes into the journey. <laughs> Just hold on, Woody. You'll be back home in 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> At least there's a 10 percent chance you'll be back home in 18 months. They, hopefully, they would figure out that you got space sick before they rocketed you to Mars. I I would like to go in one of those machine those uh, centrifuges like yeah. we saw those videos of that Air Force guy uh, and you know he was like taking multiple G's and and staying conscious that looked interesting that, like that guy that was like the hero and they offered him like an opportunity yeah. yeah that was pretty neat well have you ever been on those gravity things at uh like a uh, amusement parks where they drop the floor out and you're yep. stuck in the wall yeah I did those well actually. I did not. I vomited. I, yeah. <laughs> you vomited on well, one of those. Oh, well, I got so sick from that thing. It like ruined the day. Well, it's like one of those <laughs> times ten. <laughs> I went upside did you down vomit on one. while you were on it. Like, no, no. Like I don't remember where I actually vomited. I may have. I may have just made me really nauseous, and I never did vomit. But I just remember I didn't even want the deep fried Twinkie afterwards. <laughs> it, oh. I get that at amusement parks too. Sometimes it's it's not that I'm vomiting. I'm always like excited to go to the next ride, but secretly kind of thankful that there's a line. You know, <laughs> just a little recovery time for me to get things straight before I the next home. ride starts. You went home? Oh yeah, it was bad. I, I felt like shit. I, I prefer mm. roller coasters. Much yeah, for sure. Over like the spin me around. I, I don't get on the swings. Uh, I don't get on the like the teacups. Any of that shit. It'll make me puke. The spinning around stuff. But as long as it's a roller, co the roller coasters can like you know do loops. They can do anything they want, and, and I'm I'm fearless. But you you put me on like the teacups, and I'll be puking everywhere. Or those scramblers where you just have to pray to God that someone who doesn't weigh fifty pounds more than you sits to the left of you, <laughs> and then it's just whoa. whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> they just get smushed. I, I threw up on a kid on one of those one time when I I, I myself was probably <laughs> like ten, and he was he was younger than me, and I had my friend to my left and his little brother to my right. And I don't know why I didn't vomit on my own lap. That that that's that's what I would do now. I would like pull my shirt up and just vomit in my shirt or something. I guess. <laughs> but, like, I was just like, eh, mer, mer, and just puked in this guy's like oh. all over his like legs and shoes and lap and stuff. I you vomited. Ruined all. his day and his yeah, got, friends' days. <laughs> yeah, got, it was all over my shoes too. And I just remember I felt I, I should have felt worse than I did, but I just didn't give a fuck at the time. <laughs> Fucks given equals zero. Zero at the time. I was, I was worried about my sneakers. I had to clean them that night. I had to eat a candy apple too. Ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> I haven't had a candy apple in ages. Oh, me either. You just uh, vomited yeah. a turkey leg and a bunch of artificial caramel oh, one all time, over the place. One time I got sick after I'd eaten a bunch of like fudge brownies, so it was like shitting out of your mouth like Cartman. It was just like <laughs> sticky. It was just like. <laughs> 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 That was just tears running down my face. My my girlfriend was at the door. He's like, "Are you?" Uh, I was like, "Go away!" It's like a continuous I'm shitting tube out of, of my mouth. Fudge, vomiting you can feel just like just vomiting. they were sticky, and you could feel it coming down your esophagus. It was the worst. It was really bad. Uh, nasty. Yeah. dude, I've got a story. Let's hear it. All right, so this happened in India on uh, my birthday, February nineteenth. <laughs> Wedding ends in brawl. After bride marries the guest instead of the groom. Like on accident or? <laughs> no. What? It was surely a wedding that both families will never forget. A bride in India decided to marry a guest on her big day after the groom-to-be had a seizure during the ceremony. The decision sparked a brawl after the husband-to-be regained consciousness and realized his would-be wife was with someone else, reported the Times of India. The incident <laughs> unfolded when Jugal Kishore of more Dabad was preparing to garland his 23-year-old bride, Indira. As Kishore extended his arms, he had an epileptic fit and fell to the ground in front of the gathering. The bride, apparently angry that her family was kept in the dark about Kishore's medical condition, announced that she would marry a guest at the wedding instead. The guest, dressed only in jeans and a leather jacket, was reportedly startled before agreeing to the bride's request. And the ceremony continued. After Kishore received medical treatment from a doctor and returned to the wedding, he pleaded with the bride to change her mind, but she refused. A brawl then broke out, where spoons, plates, and dishes were used as weapons. Authorities detained a few in the brawl. Kishore's family later filed a police report, but withdrew it after amicably resolving the matter with the bride's family. The police officer told the Times of India. So, yeah. Dude, doesn't this have to be like someone that she knows? It's not like nope. a complete stranger. It could be. That's the thing about Indian marriages. Woody knows better than anyone. Like this all makes this would this would be insane if it were anywhere but India with those arra- yeah. yeah. It makes sense. Do you think it was an arranged marriage or one of those like super rich families where they let them do what they want and they have a giant like five thousand person feast? What often happens in India is kind of a um. They wouldn't consider them arranged marriages. They're like, this wasn't an arranged marriage. There was a detailed interview process. We agreed to this. You know, like <laughs> they think of an arranged marriage as one where, like, it's almost forced, right? Like, like that happens in Game of Thrones. But what happens in India is, like, you know, like, all right, so this guy's in, you know, interviewing all these potential families. They'll make sure the whole family meshes. They'll make sure that they match. They might even go on like one or two dates, and then they get married. And uh, I guess, but, but, but the parents are providing the the candidates, right? Right, and and they're involved in the interview process, you know, and they get to, and oftentimes, like you know, they know each other, and they kind of know what kind of stock they're dealing with too, right? This is my son. He's a doctor and he's handsome. So I expect prime grade women to be applying for this guy. <laughs> this is my other son. You know, he's an auto mechanic and he's medium looking. So we expect some C grade women, you know, to be applying for the position of his wife. And, it's still uh, pretty callous to do all this in the middle of the wedding where it's just like, ah, fuck it. Whatever. We're already here. It, Grab it, this guy. It, let's do it. So so he had an epileptic seizure and they were like, oh, you didn't disclose the fact that this guy wasn't prime breeding material during the interview process. So she married a guest. It, wow. it's sure, callous, without a doubt. <clears throat> but, but do you think that that, that guy was not pre-qualified? Uh, like, he's the second-string quarterback, put him in? 
<laughs> oh, the, the guest? Right. I don't know. I wonder what I wonder what he said. Like, you know, like, all right, I'm going to marry someone else. What do we got out here? Engineer, look like this, 23 years old. You know, all right, all right. Not bad. What else we got out here? You know, PhD candidate, 27 years old, look like that. And she just, I, like, I wonder how quickly she found guy yeah. number two. Like the the dad up there, like an auctioneer. We got an engineer. We got an engineer. Doctor, doctor. Give me doctor. Give me doctor. Doctor, doctor. Five. Sold. <laughs> Do I hear attorney? Do I hear attorney? Yeah. <laughs> oh, patent lawyer. Patent lawyer. <laughs> Her family must have been really rich or she must have been really hot for some dude to just agree out of nowhere to get married like that, knowing that this is the type of woman that if you get stopped for like a fucking speeding ticket on the way home from work, she's going to be calling the insurance agency trying to cash in on your life insurance. Like, yeah, I haven't seen him in 18 minutes past when he was supposed to be home. He, he's dead. Dead. I'm, I'm about to get remarried. Like, it's just, yeah. this is, that's, uh, I guess you could just say like, something about culture and it being okay, but I have no idea. I, I'm not very versed in Indian culture. Yeah, it just seems very bizarre to me. Shucks. I'm, I'm trying to, her first name's Indira. But I want to, like, I wish I could find her first and last name so I could Google her and see what she looks like. Uh, it's not coming up. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder how hot she was. That'd be that'd be interesting. But they're Those Indian right. marriages, those are huge, right? Like, they yeah. have hundreds of people there, so it seems like a bad idea to be like, well, there's 2,500 people here. Probably a good idea to piss off 1,250 of them. <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, they're they're big, they're expensive, they're multi day affairs, and um, the also like uh, the people I worked with would send themselves deep into debt, like like they'd spend, you know, fifty seventy five thousand dollars a year salary on their you know brother's wedding, just uh -huh. to shower them in like gifts and things, and a lot of them had no lasting value either, you know, like big shows and displays of wealth or fun for the wedding day. You know, like it's one thing. Like in my head, this is the frugal version of me. But like, if you devote seventy five grand towards the house he's buying, that's a really cool thing. But seventy five grand in party, that's yeah. stupid. You buy three and a half million doves. It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a good example too. Well, like, I've never been to a bar party that cost seventy five thousand dollars, so I couldn't really say if it would be worth. You haven't not. lived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to think. The most I, I went to a forty or fifty thousand dollar wedding once. Yeah. Um, Joe's wedding's coming up. That should be a nice little affair. I'm sure. I'm sure. I hope it's frugal. Right. Yeah, we talked about this one time. I don't think they're frugal about that sort of thing. Joe, Joe seems really pragmatic. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I remember when you and me and Joe and maybe one other person, I can't remember who it was, we're, we're in a car in Chicago and we we're kind of talking about, we were talking about this sort of thing. We we're talking about how much to spend on weddings and you were being really pragmatic. And I feel like he was the one being like, nah, nah, you throw a big one. And he was he was talking about making a, you know, spending a lot of money. on. We'll see what he does. I hope, I, I'm with you. I, I feel like it should be a, conservative sort of thing yeah i don't know where they landed it last time i talked to joe about it he and his fiance were uh i mean it was a i guess they were putting their heads together trying to figure out where on the spectrum they wanted to land yeah so uh it should be cool i look forward to it in may right they get married yeah may yeah so april paintball may marriage good yeah it's gonna be good i, I uh I, I think we should get a few more. I don't like them saying that we don't come through with that stuff because a lot of the stuff, like the Jeremy Wheel of Pain thing, you just can't make like, – like if he come, I, I do it. He won't come. He refuses to do the Jeremy Wheel of Pain. Like he won't. I don't know why, right? I mean this <laughs> – It's because it's, it's torture. You know? <laughs> I know. He has, he's got a full-time job. He's working. There will be no Jeremy Wheel of Pain because Jeremy doesn't want to be subjected to a Wheel of Pain. You know, 2012 Jeremy would have done it. Oh, 2012 Jer Jeremy would have fucking put a bottle rocket up his ass or something. We need a 2012 Jeremy. What is the Wheel of Pain? It's a uh, it's a little wheel you spin, and there are like uh, pie sections on it, and some of them are cash, and some of them are horrible things like um, you know getting shot with a beanbag round or tasered, or getting a PKA <laughs> tattoo, or uh, you know having to do like tw like six shots back to back. Uh, you know, weird stuff Pickle like that. Pickle shots and the other like, horrible things. That uh, sounds like fun. 
Yeah. I thought it'd be fun. It yeah. seemed like fun for us. But Jeremy wasn't up for it. That yeah. Means, so can't do it, you know. That's, that's how things go. Yeah, some of those things weren't our fault. And some, I think a couple of them were Wings related, like video ideas that he didn't follow yeah, up yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You can't get somebody to do Fat Lincoln if they don't want to do Fat Lincoln. And even even so, if you, Oh. What happened? Four hour limit for the group call. I just lost. What? Oh, really? You reached your four hour limit. <laughs> I've never seen that. Let's call back. Okay. I didn't know that was a thing. All right. And call. Here we go. All right, we got another four hours. Let's see, are people in the right slots? They are. All right, cool. All right, so that's the thing. I never had a. Four yeah, hour. we reached the four-hour limit on our group call, so <laughs> we're back. Jesus in business. Christ! So let's press on a bit. What, what, what were we just talking about? That uh, kind of we threw were, me for a oh, loop. Fat Lincoln. Now I'm not sure Fat Lincoln was a gold idea. That was my idea. So, so it's a little bit more than just him dressing up as Fat Lincoln. He was going to do a, uh, a, a Gettysburg address, but it was going to be gaming related. It was, you know, four score and eight Call of Duties ago, our fathers brought forth onto this game platform a new shooter. You know, it's going to be like that. And I was going to write it for him. And I, that was just off the top of my head there. So I could probably come up with something pretty good. There I, I, I so found the costume. I, I once did a video and I couldn't find it, but. Basically, I took that Al Pacino speech from any given Sunday and did it again in terms of domination, right? Like, this game is fought for one ticket at a time, and you fight for those tickets, and you claw for those tickets, and you... Oh, my God. I thought it was the coolest thing, and I thought my delivery was amazing, and my voice was hoarse like his was, and I drummed up all the, like, passion and inspiration I could, and then I uploaded it thinking, like, yeah drop the mic this shit's gonna go wild <laughs> oh my god it was one of the poorest received videos in the history of my channel they all said i suck that you know they never tried to do pacino that it, it if you had had wings do lincoln there's a decent chance it would have been received do the your same way. do your pacino voice i want to hear it <laughs> i need the speech <laughs> hold on no, just I don't some know, improv. Man, you put the wings cuff. in a costume, and it's just funny. That's what, I, you know, it, when you saw him wearing that wig, drinking that juice that was going to make him poop or whatever, like, that's a funny video, because he's wearing the wig, looking, he looks like a little, It's it looks a little bit like John Travolta from Pulp Fiction, but he's he's him, so it's what just What wig funny. did he wear, drinking the juice? It was like a long black, like, wig, like, down to here almost. It was all in his eyes. He's like, pulling it out of his face while he's like, like he and Kitty are talking about it and he's, he drinks down this juice drink that's got these seeds in it and it like cleans your colon out or something he hadn't pooped in like three or four days about to have to like glove up and go on in there you know like gangster granny gangster or something gangster grandma on the task yeah yeah he's gonna have to go in you know elbow deep to get the guy moving his bowels I was talking to Joe I was texting with him I was like he still isn't shit man what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. Yeah, I, I, there were a lot of ideas like that. You just can't get people to, to do stuff like that. I, now, I've put on like six costumes on the show. I'll dress up as Fat Lincoln, but you know, maybe maybe I could be regular Lincoln. Uh, I'll look into no. those. No? no, the fat is what makes it funny. I thought so, too. Regular Lincoln is an Academy Award winning movie. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to beat that. That's true. That's true. Uh, Speaking of the Academy Award, Daniel Day Lewis him. Birdman won uh, Best Picture. That was a great movie. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. We, uh, Woody uh, and I and Shiz watched it together. I was neutral on it. I don't know. Like it, Upon reflection... Go ahead. Stratton was trying to talk. It's like watching a play, though. It was like... It's it's cool mm-hmm. play, but as a movie... And like the whole continuous shot thing's cool, but I, I really didn't think it was like the best movie ever as far as content. I enjoyed no. the performances. I thought Edward Norton was great. And I really liked watching actors portray actors acting. If, if that makes sense. Right, right. When they, because it was different. When they were on that stage putting on a performance for the crowd, they're, they're acting you know, like they're acting. Acting yeah. like they're acting. It's clearly different. And that's a whole other level of acting. And you could see it. And Edward Norton was great. And, uh, and Michael Keaton, I've always known, was a great actor. Uh, he's one of those guys. He's like a Reddit uh, R movies favorite. They love, they've been shouting mm. that guy's praises for years, wanting him, to, wanting him to have that comeback role. And so they're just drooling over this. Everybody's so happy for him. Yeah, I liked the performances and like the cinematography of it. But yeah. as, a, as a story, eh. you nailed it for me too. Like the performances were incredible, and and what Kyle said about actors playing actors was really interesting too. Like you could see them up there on stage being actors, and then they came out of that role 
And it's like they weren't acting anymore. All of a sudden, they were so good at their characters that you're like, oh, now I'm back to real life. Mm -hmm. and, and like, so that was kind of neat to see. They, they, it, the, the, ta the cast was super talented. But the story afterwards, like, I'm, I was just... Like, Emma Stone was good. It, it was like a vanity vehicle or something for Michael Keaton to show off his talents. And, uh, you know, that, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm I looking like be that because... The story. Because I felt like the the character in in the in the in the film so directly mirrored Michael Keaton's reality, like you know, right. it seemed like the character is struggling with the fact that he can't be Birdman anymore. This superhero he played back in the day that's not in style anymore, and nowadays superhero guys who are playing superheroes are making millions and millions, and they're you know the you know you got Robert Downey Jr. He and, and he's even thinking about it. He's like, you should have been Iron Man, and you know going back and forth with this. Right. And you look at the Birdman poster and you're like, wait a minute, when you take like this much of it away, it's Batman. This mm. is all a parallel to Keaton's bat performance as Batman back in the early 90s. You know, he was the first Batman. And it's almost like he's speaking from the heart here. Like, like he's really saying like, I was fucking Batman first. I had that shit nailed. People loved me as Batman, you know, and I, I could have been Iron Man. It's almost like he's really... It's almost like it's real, and, and that was kind of dark to me. Like when he's having that self-reflection, if you can even call it that, when he's having a conversation with Birdman, and Birdman's like, "You're a god," and he's just like, and he's just get out of my head, like back and forth. I like that. And I was what's thinking, your, like, what's your take on the telekinesis? Oh, that's all in his head. He was he was crazy. There's he's not flying. There, I knew that from the beginning. Like the guy doesn't yeah, have superpowers. Yeah, he was just a lunatic. He was yeah, just imagining crazy. all these things, living in his glory days. Yeah, Birdman. Yeah, he. he it, it, the coolest part to me was, like I said, that Michael that it almost felt like it was real, and that maybe Michael Keaton has those thoughts in his own head. I, it was I liked it a lot. Um, I didn't think it was going to win Best Picture, and I thought Interstellar was going to get mm. some awards, but they seemed to get nothing. Yeah. That's and, my uh, favorite movie of the year. of the year. It was so fucking good. Yeah, um, I, I'm I getting ready to twice in the theaters for a three-hour movie to feel like you know, oh man, I just want to watch it again. You know, yeah, I awesome. really enjoyed it. I, I, I'm looking for. I'm, I'm going to watch it a second time here soon. Uh, but it's one of those movies that, like, I want to make sure I'm upstairs on my big TV and it's nighttime and the lights are off and I can turn the volume up as loud as I want and I can really enjoy it because it's just so good. Yeah, I went I, to I, IMAX to see it the first time. Yeah, I did too. In um, because they shot it in uh, in what millimeter? It was like, like 45 millimeter or something. It was something. It was like 90. It was something crazy. 90, yeah. And you had to go like a special theater to get the full effect of it. And I did that. I went to like there's a the biggest theater in Georgia and watched it. I, I really dug it. It might be 70 double 35. Yeah, yeah, that that's it. But uh, but it didn't really get any. I don't think it got any awards. Uh, I know Boyhood got a couple. It seemed like um, that's Birdman. what I want to see. Yeah, I'm interested in that. The the whole process. Ethan Hawke's in that one as well. I think. Uh, so so yeah, I'd be up for watching that. Uh, Selma is that it, it about the the civil rights movie? I I'm not interested in that at all. I'd watch it, but yeah, the, <laughs> I forget. Um, I'm gonna slaughter the joke, but it was uh, Bill Maher from the HBO special was saying that he's like, you know, the awards have gotten so segmented, right? Like all the black people are voting for like Selma to get it, and all the white people are voting for. You know, Interstellar to get it, and then all the priests in the Vatican are voting for Boyhood, because <laughs> that's, that's, that's what funny. they're into. That's yeah, funny. Awesome joke. Well, tw what was it? 12, <laughs> 12 Years a Slave? That was a good that's movie. That's the one I, yeah, he actually said it was, 12 Years a Slave. That was a good movie. I, I still haven't I seen that. It. It's very good. I, 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 I recommend I, it. There's only so much white guilt that you could pile on my shoulders here. <laughs> I don't need to see that. I know what it's about. It's awful. It's a. It, he was a what? northerner, and these guys came up from the south, and they basically kidnapped this man who was a free man and brought him down to the south and enslaved him for 12 years, and it's his story. I don't need that. It was but, probably my fucking great 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 grandpa who went and like clubbed him over the head or something like. But, but I mean, even outside of the story, if you can like Birdman for its performance and cinematography and stuff like that it's, outside mean, of the story it's still a good movie to watch I, I see where you're going with that but i need a little more i it, it, it can't be <laughs> depressing like like i can watch a movie like my life well, it has a happy ending spoiler uh, it's not that <laughs> you know what i didn't realize about sleep i was watching crash course Are you guys familiar with crash course the youtube channel john green runs it i, don't no. think I awesome. discovered it it's not new but i discovered it like two or three months ago and it's amazing. This guy in 15 minutes covers history. 
and uh, it's really like the production value is super high, and and I just keep learning more about John Green. He, you know that um, A Fault in Our Stars, that movie about the two kids yeah. with cancer. My daughter loved it. He wrote yep. that book. He has like several. He has the Vlog Brothers YouTube channel. He has the Crash Course YouTube channel. He's this guy's just amazing at his jobs. Anyway, he um he did a thing on slavery, and the big takeaway from it that that was news to me was I always thought we we like I had anything to do with it got the slaves by going to Africa in like the dark of night and stealing people and putting them on boats and chaining them up etc. That wasn't how it happened at all. Like we'd go. We, again. Uh, but the, the slave owned traders would go work with, like, the chiefs of a tribe, and they would give up their people. They'd sell them. They were selling people into slavery, and then they'd take them to um, the America, and they'd sell them at a higher price. Yeah, or the Caribbean. Yeah. Or the Caribbean, yeah. They, they were going there buying slaves for a dollar and selling them for two. And... Uh, I don't, they just made the slave traders seem like the only bad people in this chain when the other bad people were the chiefs of these African tribes. Yeah. Sometimes they'd sell enemies, but a lot of times, yeah, you're right, they'd sell their own people. Just, uh, they were out to make a buck. It, it, it wasn't a... So there has to be instances of, of people just kidnapping a whole village and putting them on a boat, though. Well, I just don't think that the traders are, are equipped for that. They've got to show up and, you know, they, they show up. It's easier to show up with gold or, or, or currency of some kind and just pay to get the people than it is to show up with a bunch of guys and be like, all right, we're going to this village over here and, like, like take them by armed combat or something like that. Yeah, especially if that were going on, you'd... If that were going on, it wouldn't take long before the villages were really ready to defend themselves against, you know, a ship, right? Yeah. One ship full of invaders is going to get you nowhere. But a ship where you can buy people i can see how that becomes a sustainable model hmm. yeah I, I never knew that didn't i didn't you? know it either but it, afterwards it made perfect sense and it was like you know i feel like the chiefs of africa got off scot-free in the annals of history you know when the the slave traders were made out to be the sole bad guys or the slave buyers what about the slave sellers they're awful too yeah i well, think every, everyone in the whole chain was a little bit, uh, well, morally off. <laughs> well, it's we good to this. see Africa is such a peaceful place nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Republican <laughs> dream. Advanced and... Yeah, and, there's, and, there's uh, very little forward government thinking. controls, guns for everybody. This mm -hmm. is uh, no EPA. Mm. Progressive is the way to Africa say it. Africa is a scary fucking place. <laughs> yeah. Progressive yeah. is the term for Democrat now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. It's such a douchey way to describe yourself. It's a libertarian Progressive. dream. <laughs> it's like a, it's a way to describe yourself that's also condescending to others. Oh, I'm I'm pro oh, yo, of course you don't get it. You're not progressive. You, you're not progressing society you're like I am. I am progressive. You're you're just let me pat you on your head. You don't understand. Like just <laughs> fuck you. But they made liberal a curse word. They had to pick a new one. What would you have picked? Uh, hippie. I don't know. Yeah. Hippie. <laughs> hippie. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah, but it, it yeah. They they somehow made liberal like a a bad word. Oh, the rare spotting of the Merka girlfriend. I've got a question <laughs> for you, Merka. <laughs> Very sneaky. Your um your room back there is immaculate. Is it always so? My room? Yeah, I'm looking behind you. Every book is in sh in place. Every look at those two decorative things on top of the case. The light that it's place very, oh, very well organized. Those, those it looks recently books. vacuumed. Those are all those are all TV series or movies. Yeah, that's all movies and TV series. Books are on a different shelf over there, but it's usually pretty clean unless yeah. your pictures like, for are the most square. Part. That place is uh, you are a landlord's dream. Yeah. I'm, I'm always very, very disorganized, hence the backdrop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm disorganized, and that is my backdrop. <laughs> I am. Re yeah. This this room is a is a real fucking disaster area. Uh, there's, there is shit everywhere. Uh, Just guns everywhere. and bullets. Guns and bullets and, and and all kind of gear and accessories. There's like a pile of holsters over there, and like paintball pods and pistols. My other paintball rifle, like weights over here, and like 
I don't know, night vision and gun cases and ammo and a bowl with an old banana peel in it. And yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm not dirty. I don't leave like food sitting out rotting and stuff. But it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's all it's all valuable stuff. But it, here, I'll give you a little shot of what's on the floor here. Like that's a pile of valuable stuff just spread out. <laughs> that's all, a all over funny the floor. way for people who are kind of messy to justify their messiness. Where it's like, well, it's not like there are cats rotting under newspapers from 1943, but there's a little bit of stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, my big a- mess is that. PC case back there, and I just haven't parted with it yet. It was expensive. It, it was four hundred dollars, but it was the one I wanted. So I was like, "All right, I'll spend the extra two fifty, I guess, over what a normal good case would cost, and I'll use it from PC to PC to PC." Well, now I want a rack mounted case, so I took all the internals and put it in a new rack mountable case. And uh, I'm just like, "Well, that thing is good. It's not broken. I could still have it. I, why would I throw it away? Throwing it away because it's just a mess sitting there." It doesn't have much value to me. I, it's just a little slow to part with it because it cost a lot. Yeah, yeah. You sell it online or something. Valuable things. I, I took have... so much of my junk and eBayed it. I, if it was easier to ship, I mean, it's big and it's heavy, and I, I feel like it costs seventy five dollars to ship somewhere. Mm. Craigslist, maybe that. Then you, you got to deal it with up. it though. Yeah, yeah, Craigslist. I don't know. Then I have to deal with it, like you said. I, trash list man Just fucking dump it move on let it go I, I think that's what I'll do but I haven't done it yet yeah uh, I've got a new well, story well, what you got the world's first penis reduction surgery <laughs> that can't be the first wow. according to uh, the daily mail and I think All right. Fox News was involved Ooh, the daily anyway. mail <laughs> there's a reputable news source um, the teenager requested the operation after his manhood grew so large that he wasn't able to have sex anymore. Wow. 17-year-old boys undergone the world's first penis reduction surgery, surgeons claim. The American teen requested the surgery after his penis grew too large, restricting his ability to have sex or play competitive sports. The boy's surgeons were shocked when he came to them complaining his penis was too big. When flaccid, it measured almost 7 inches in length and had a circumference of 10 inches around the size of a grapefruit. What? That's like a... a... That's like a arm. disease. That's like <laughs> elephantitis. Yeah, elephantitis of the dick. Surgeons That's like described having it fluid being... stuck in your skin. That's Surgeons described it as being shaped like an American football. The surgeon who treated the teenager, Raphael Carrion, a urologist at the University of South Florida, of course, there comes a time in every urologist's career that a patient makes a request so rare and it's impossible to comprehend that all the training breaks down and leaves the physician spe- speechless. That question was, can you make my penis smaller? The teenager had suffered from bouts of priapism. I don't know what that is. An unwanted erection due to having a condition in which an abnormally shaped blood cell blocks the vessels in the penis, causing it to swell. The episode left his penis bloated and misshapen. He said he was unable to have sex or play competitive sports. After having difficulty wearing pants due to his large and heavy phallus, he was embarrassed by how visible it was and it appeared under regular clothing. Though his penis was large, it didn't grow when he had erections. It merely became firmer. His penis inflated like a balloon. This sounds like a man's dream, a tremendously inflated phallus. But unfortunately, it was the generous length and its girth was just massive, especially around the middle. It looked like an American football. Dr. Carey and his team looked at the medical literature but couldn't find any precedent for what to do. Lord knows, there's a global race on how to make it longer and thicker in plastic surgery circles, but very little on how to make it smaller. In the end, they decided to embark on a surgical technique normally used to treat Perion's disease, a condition where scar tissue develops around the penis, causing it to bend. The mm. surgeon sliced along an old circumcision star, scar, unwrapped the penis, and cut out two segments of tissue from either side. It was a bit like having two side tummy tucks. That's how we explained it to him. The doctors were able to bypass the urethra, the the tube which contains ur- carries urine through the penis and all the nerves that provide sensation. The teenager spent just two days in the hospital before returning home, apparently ecstatic with his new penis. The doctors didn't take final measurements of the penis, although Dr. Carrion told Mail Online the result was, quote-unquote, generous. 
It's slightly <laughs> oh, longer and thicker sucks. than <laughs> it's slightly longer and thicker than the average male, but now it looks symmetrical and the patient was very satisfied. The teen now has no problem having normal erections with full sensation. It looks cosmetically appealing. It was a life-changing event and he's all smiles. Since the paper describing the surgery was published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine, Dr. Carrion has had the only one person approach him and request the same surgery. The second man seems to have a naturally large penis because there's nothing unusual in his medical history. So it doesn't seem like there's real any abnormality in this case. Whereas wow. the first teenager had an obvious medical condition that needed training. <clears throat> Performing surgery on someone who's completely healthy but having difficulties with the size of his penis is another matter. Their controversial waters were stepping in. Who is to judge what is a legitimate complaint and what isn't? You don't normally have men complaining about these things. It's a unique case. Yeah, that priapism cook. thing, like that would, eventually that would have, like made it rot off. Like if Is there's right? no blood getting there, yeah. yeah. Like so that. I have a like a medical picture of the penis here. I'll share. I don't want to see. Yeah, I don't want to see it either. Yeah, I want to see it. You do. You do. <laughs> it, it, it's like an X-ray, and uh, all right. It. Oh yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, it's, it's not a good cock. I mean, I, I've seen many, many cocks. And uh, <laughs> not, not a good one. Yeah, this not one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, when you first said about the penis reduction, I'm thinking like a 15 inch penis cut down to seven, but that's not the case. It was not made shorter. It's just this over swollen football that was reduced down to a penis size. Yeah, yeah. I forget. <laughs> they said how long did they say it was? Ten inches? We said no. seven. Classic. Ten around. Oh right, right, and. They didn't. Uh, yeah, they, didn't, they, didn't they, did, they said yeah. seven in length and ten around. Yeah. Flaccid. Flaccid. Yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming. No, but they said it didn't change because there was like that condition that the blood clot, right? It just got firmer or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a weird scenario. Oh, well, good for him. That's good. Yeah, good for him. That's unfortunate. It's been hard to walk around with that thing. Congratulations oh, on Kyle. your new penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. I wonder what his situation is like in high school. Like, oh, whoops. I wonder if that could have killed him. It can't be that embarrassing. There are, there are much more embarrassing things to have happen in high school. <laughs> no, dude, but this isn't just like, a, oh, it's getting everywhere. It's like it's a, a, it's like a deformity. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. It doesn't <laughs> even look... The cock was so big they had to <laughs> operate on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, yeah, that'd be pretty, and, and I bet it's one of those situations like uh, they described in. Um, Make for a good story, though. I, I bet, I bet it's a better penis afterwards. I bet he has a a, mm -hmm. a perfectly shaped one. It's it's perfectly symmetrical. He got exactly what he wanted. I wonder if it stands up properly, right? Because before it seemed to just inflate like a water balloon. You they know, you, seem... you really want it to point north, like that. It to made me... it sound like. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Maybe they'll write a follow-up story. <laughs> maybe he'll do porn. That'd be great. That's what he. Yeah. Maybe he'll yeah. end up in the porn industry. I wonder how a career well he, for him. Yeah, there, there could be some money in there. He's seventeen now. He's got to hang on. Was well, that a show? I okay. believe it is. All right. So, Painkiller already episode two hundred and nineteen. Oh, you need to pimp Squarespace. Absolutely, Squarespace dot com slash pka. That's how you get that free trial plus ten percent off. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, or, portfolio, or online store. And I swear to fucking God, we got to we got to partner with them and make some kind of a website because I think that'd be really fun. And I got some ideas. Awesome. Check out Wicked Shrapnel. Link in the description. Yep. And uh, thanks for having me, guys. Yep. I'm working on Dan again. Use my coupon code. Buy their shit. Make them like me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take it easy. <laughs>